Welcome. I am not muted this time. I keep doing that to myself. <laughs> Welcome, everyone, <laughs> to the 70th episode. I have to say it very slowly. Because mm. I'll say seven, 70th anniversary. And I'm like, when did we start doing that? would be a very long. That would be like, what, one of the longest running shows? <sighs> Look good for 70. I, I know, right? Thank you, man. Yeah. Gray hair hasn't come in all the way yet. You know? Mm. I am growing better. my hair out. I am growing my hair out, guys. Oh, just to nice. see how much gray hair. My wife's like looking in the back, like, "Oh, you got some here, here." I was like, yeah. "Yeah." I think a man should embrace the gray hair. It's okay. Exactly. 100%, yeah. I mean, just, I cut my mouth, but I'm all gray, and yeah. Just you know, when it comes to baldness, just be aware that sometimes it's it's true. Some people have the head. Some people don't. I'm lucky. So you just hold on to it. Mike is just holding on to it for the last straws. He's like, I'm going to have a one strand. You're going to be the Homer Simpson. Of- I am. <laughs> See, I've it's shaved true. my head before. Um, I'm told it looks good. I've grown it long, like a, a gang. So I, I can do either or. But I shave. I'm pretty short now. I got bored with the long hair. So. Uh, but let's go around the table. And we're going to see how everyone's week's going. I know some people might come in a little bit later. I know our guest, um, I think Bushmaster, Tyrone Bushmaster. Ooh. I think so. He's trying to get in. He has a little technical difficulties, um, which is okay. Um, yeah. Andy isn't isn't here. He has some stuff that came up that he he's like, look, I got to get this done. No worries. Um, Jeff has a link. Um, if he's probably asleep or making more beer, mm. brewing it. Beer's but, good. Um, yeah, he makes yeah, his own beer. Nice. Yeah, he does. Mm. I want to try some. But um, Mike, yes. how how's your week been? No carbon tax on that. Um, it's been pretty good. It's been a very interesting week. A very, very um, interesting week. I wonder. Yeah. Why. I can't imagine why. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, you know, went for a casting call in Calgary for a Netflix show. Um, that's going to be set in the 1850s. So it's a Western and, uh, my God, that lineup was long. It was so long, but I got there early enough, like at 9.30, even though technically it was supposed to start at 10. By the time I got out at 11.30, like the line was even longer going through the parking lot and down the street and all that kind of stuff. So it was pretty cool. Um, you know, gave them my my acting resume and, and a headshot, Ooh. you know. Yeah, I know. And, you know, you fill out your questionnaire. Can you ride a horse? Can you do blacksmithing? Can you shoe a horse? Can you play an instrument? Blah, blah, blah. So, um, yeah, the only thing I got to do is wait for a phone call or an email or something like that and uh, be further in the line, so to speak. So I'm not expecting anything to happen, but, you know, um, because if something does happen, then it's just more surprising that way. And, um, you know, um, just... Uh, um, just talking about freedom with some people, mm-hmm. which is good, which is always yeah. good, you know. And uh, yeah, what else? Then you know the uh, the eclipse was Monday, so I did stare at the sun. Um, <laughs> I, nice. I, 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 I you had, would, I did, and I had dark sunglasses on top of that, so we saw a partial eclipse. Yeah. So, and I'm not ashamed to admit it, and I'm not blind. So there mm. you go. Take that science. Hey. <laughs> uh tom hey not much What's going really on here. Uh, just i didn't bother with the eclipse thing i did one it's hard to find those glasses not many people were having them around so uh, i was like ah eh, whatever you know everybody was taking pictures i'm a photographer but eh. um freedoms well, you mentioned the freedom thing that's something we're losing here in canada but i can go on about yeah. that um and probably to tie in with what you're going to be talking about later too um no not much else going on just um we did some projects photography stuff uh worked on my uh post wrestlemania podcast which is up now i'm um, just uh i was pumped and cody finished the story any wrestling fans you know what i'm talking about cody finished the story i don't know what you're talking about yes oh, i do no. it was awesome so but hey roman <laughs> you did a great job it was an amazing run so it was pretty cool that's good that's good uh our canadian spider-man how's your week been show off with a little bonfire in the background Fantastic. Well, I've been doing a lot of this. You have a green screen, don't you? 
Yeah, that's totally a green screen. That's that's how my microphone <laughs> got melted was through green screen. Ma- green screen. Mm. Say that I, twenty times fast. Yeah, I can't wait to get a yard like that and do that. Oh, that just looks fun and relaxing. It's been a fantastic week. Uh, getting firewood, sharpening chainsaws, burning shit. It was raining here, so didn't get a chance to see the uh, the the eclipse. But um, been been doing a lot of uh, preparation for planting and stuff in the garden, getting the little little guys going. So yeah, it's been there been fantastic. Go. Sweet. Been really quite productive. And hello to. Gordy and, and Gap, hi. Yo, dudes. Yeah, they're all in there. Um, <coughs> we are streaming on both X, YouTube, and no. uh, I've been writing Rumble. a yeah, lot huh? of our MPs. I, I've written about a dozen of our MPs this week, and I've actually mentioned action. Now that you mentioned it, the First and Second Amendments and the fact that Canada could use them. Yeah, 100%. So yes. That is important. Nice. Because it's writing your MP does has more of an effect if he knows you've got weaponry. Mm-hmm. Oh, it does. It does. Um, yeah. So, like, share, whatever. You, however, you guys want to support it, rants, whatever. However, you guys want to do it. Smash like, that like it button. Everywhere. Do it now. Share the video, and if you don't, you're a simp. On YouTube, Rumble. But would it? Hold up. But wouldn't? But wouldn't you liking? And sharing it, would that make you a simp or not a simp? Oh, dude. No, 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 no. You don't want to lose people. No. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I love your content. It's amazing. Yeah. Mm. But um, my week's been pretty – it's been pretty chill. Worked a lot. Um, Got a new mug. I got a new mug to match my Chuck Norris poster. It is with Trump, though. Mm. Nice. Yes. That is nice. How does thanks how to, does the liquid thanks to Gary to, to getting this made? What were you gonna say, Mike? How does the liquid inside taste? Uh, the Trump Trumptastic. Oh, it's Trumptastic. Mm. It's gorgeous. It's fantastic. Yeah. It's liberating. It's nice. freedom. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Oh man, this is gonna be a fun one. So tonight, taste that freedom. Uh, Tonight we are talking about the Second Amendment and why it's important for men to hold on to that. But before we get to it, just before, because you gotta have to have a little fun. And a little fun, of course. Because I'm trying to find all this stuff because I have a bunch of stuff. You know, we're just gonna we're gonna get into it, guys. We're gonna have fun, guys. Yeah. Twitter. <laughs> um, you guys have not seen the simp tweets because I didn't get a time to can't right. get to it because I just have been busy, which is okay. But you know what? I know what I'm doing. Exactly. Sure. Possibly. Who knows? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> no. Do I know? No. Mm. Um. You but yeah, we're gonna really go through well. some. T- we're gonna go through some some tweets, and we're gonna talk about it. We we're also gonna get very critique on it. How you should do mm. this, make fun of. You know, it's yin and yang, pros and cons. You know, bada bing, bada boom. Yeah. Um. So the first one up right now is, and I hate that the the our images are like blocking it. I don't know if anyone can see it, but um, I can see it. So I'll read the bottom part. This, okay. I don't know. I just found this. This is great. Um, and I just found out the person she's named is Steve. So trust me, this isn't about me. Um, I guess she thinks every alpha male is named Steve. She says Frankie. <laughs> just the name alone is funny. Frankie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm an alpha male. Not her. The quote that she's saying. Of course. Got no, you're not. You're an ass that thinks talking over people makes you important. Do you even know what an alpha does? They feed and protect their pack. Where's Where's your fanny pack full of cheesy crackers, Steve? Um, <laughs> then at the bottom, I know, trust me, this is not for me. She was not telling this to me at all. Um, she also says, if you are out with your buds and don't have 
ibuprofen, neosporin, and cheesy crackers with you. You're not an alpha. All right, guys. Here, where, where's the problem with this? <laughs> or is she wrong? There's yeah. the question. Yes, she's. You know, to if yeah. you're gonna have. To... <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like, what you saying? If men have to carry around like a tube of of, of neosporin and crap like that, come on. If I got like you know some sort of you know, gashing scrape or something like that, dude, I'm just gonna let it bleed it out. That or I'm gonna find leeches. Rub dirt in it, <laughs> you know. Well, exactly. here's the thing. I, you know, super you know, good. Oh my god, mm -hmm. I need the neosporin and make it. Well, feel here's the thing. Better. I will like, say this. Screw that. To a certain point, I think guys, there's certain yeah. type. There's different types of men out there, and right. We have different things that we carry for us. Like for me, I have a pocket knife on mm -hmm. me just right. in case. You never know when you're going to need it. Uh, here in California, some in some cities, they freak out. They're like, oh, my gosh. I'm like, really? Like, you don't know when, <laughs> like, you if I get a splinter, like, hell, okay, I'll cut it out and get it out. Yeah. The problem is, here's the thing. I like fanny packs. I know. Oh, make fun of me all you want. I will tell you this right now. Fanny packs are amazing because guys' pants are jeans. <laughs> There's. <laughs> oh, I was like, what's oh, going on? That's an axe. Oh. Okay, got yeah, it. It's a, it's a Canadian drive by. <laughs> yeah. With an axe. That's what Anyways, it is. A, bear, uh, a so bear was being hustled and was like, no bear. Having, like, having a fanny pack or even cargo pants, cargo jeans, it makes sense. Having extra pockets for men, it does. Yeah. That's right, yeah. We have big phones. We got keys. We have wallets, pocket knives, whatever yeah. it's, whatever we have. We always get the essentials that we need to carry. I'm not going to carry ibuprofen in my fanny pack. I'm going to put no. my phone in there. I'm going to put my phone in there because it's a big old thing. It's, like, taken up, and then I'm going to put my wallet in there and stuff like if i'm working i'll have one i which i knew to get a fanny pack but i'll take one with me right and i used to put when i was working with gary at, when i first started working with him i put my phone my wallet and keys in there and just put it with my jacket and i'm like i don't have to worry about poking myself with the keys or anything it's like it was fantastic yeah. so fanny packs are, are amazing they're not Poking if you have one wear with it your keys That's what yeah, I mean, Men I mean, don't I got care my about keys poking on, themselves you know. with keys. No, because here's I, the thing: I got mine no. on that. And they're little things. Mine are in my pocket. I got a freaking yeah, wallet that's them. about like that thick, right? So, well, so can I start about the fanny pack? I loop it around the back loop, one of the back loops in my pocket, or yeah. oh, and I put that's it trusting. in the back pocket. So it's just right there. It's like um, I have a carabiner that's hooked up to it, so I put it in my back pocket so I can put my wallet. In my phone in my front pocket. Mm. Right. Right. A lot of a lot of wrestlers in the nineties. The they were always in the fanny. Yeah. Pack. If I'm yeah. if I'm doing construction and I sit down, I can have a key just go ram right up my ass cheek, and it hurts. Like okay, it's just like so I keep everything in my front pockets. But you yeah, obviously have a fatter mm -hmm. wallet than I do. Mm. I don't have that much of in my wallet. <laughs> ah. Your but diner's club to... cards take all the. <laughs> Secret for me well, was an army it. jacket. I went to an army surplus, got an army jacket, and I as you a one of those, weren't you? You actually put a camera in there, which there is you go. your stuff. So we're going to get to the next one. These they get better. See, yeah. see, I like I like Gap's I like Gap's response. Manny pack, Manny pack, Manny pack. Mm -hmm. There you go. But and if you're on YouTube, you'll see his comment. Ammunition. If you have a yep. fanny pack, carrying ammunition is is acceptable. Yeah, you could also get a fanny pack. Things. You can get a fanny pack that does a concealed carry also. Nice. Those are cool. Hmm. But not up to here's you. this sure. one. Mike, okay. can you take this one away? Uh, yeah. Okay, it's from somebody. Um, I don't see what anyone says. This is a girl I want to spend my life with. And I want, as the mother of my kids, the lom. L I don't know what that is. That's Lomo? that's. Some... I don't know what that means. Yeah, and yeah, and her response: "Whoa, chill. 
you're like a big bro to me. Delete this. <laughs> and then at the bottom, at the Enzo. bottom of my life, love yeah. of my life. Yeah. Oh, yes. And yeah. at the bottom, it says, I'm effing dying. LMAO. <laughs> All right, guys, what is, what's the problem with this? Oh, yeah. You've been friend zoned. Totally, completely. Yeah. Now, what do we do when we're friend zoned? I mean, Move if you're on. a good friend, you can be friends, but that's yeah, it. Like, yeah. no, okay, fine, no, bye. You can't be, you can't be friends. There's, no, I will stand by this. Friends. That I'm gonna do. I need to write a book of all the you're rules. Attracted to them. Yeah, no, I yeah. understand. It's, if you if you want to do things with them, yeah, that may be a little weird, but a know. guy and a girl cannot be friends. I'll it's disagree with you on that one. I have many female friends. No, because either because you don't. Because no matter what, one party is going to be attracted to the other. It's just there's no way around it. And girls Tom, aren't as loyal as men. You may not be attracted to your friends that are females, but at least, at least most of them way. probably are attracted to you. And then Tom's got a light bulb. Bing! I'm going to write notes. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. Here, all right. Here's this one right here, guys. This is okay. <sighs> Kennedy Spider Man. I want you to read this one. You guys haven't seen this one, so this is gonna be fun. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> all right. Uh, oh my god. Only a beta male would pump gas alone with a mask on. <laughs> Guys, this isn't me. Uh, All right. No. It's not She's me. Signaling. Who's virtually signaling? Uh, well, the, the guy wearing, if you're wearing a mask in public these days um, and you're by yourself, it's obviously yeah. not to, to stop you from sneezing on anyone else would be the only reason if you were coughing and sneezing and had to go in public, then would wear a mask would be the only reason you'd ever do that. Otherwise, yeah. if he's by himself, he's virtue signal. People can see, oh, look how like yeah. you know, I'm a Covidian. I yeah. belong to the Covidian uh, cult. He's virtue signal. And yeah, probably he drives in his dog. car. Yeah, probably drives he's in his car. Yeah. Absolutely. And only schmucks pump their own gas. You get the Filipino pheno kids to do this. I pump my own gas. I don't let anyone pump my own gas. That, no, that, that All right. Um, let's see. All right, Tom. Yeah. Don't worry. It's not as bad as you think. <laughs> uh, our, because every once in a while, Pokimane will pop up. They ha She has the best simps in the world. Oh, God. So, Tom. Yo. Read away. If oh. it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you can. Re okay, maybe I have to read the bottom. Yeah, I'll read this one. Double. All right. Yeah. Uh, Pokimane posted a picture of herself. I don't care. I just like the comments. No one gives a crap about you. Although she's white, dude. She's <laughs> bright like a diamond. Uh, this guy said, Sam. Yeah. He goes, Oh my god, I fi I'm finally early to one of your posts, and I don't know what to say. Dang it. Brain, I think of something. Think of something funny. Well, this is awkward, huh? All right, guys. Wow, that's her. As, as yeah, as cringy as that is, beyond cringy. Um, how would you approach it? <laughs> what's the best way? First of all, don't make a comment. I mean, is she not a bad looking woman? <laughs> eh, whatever. But no, I wouldn't care. Like whatever. Unless I'm shooting her as, as a photographer, eh, I don't care. Whatever. There's thousands yeah. and millions of women look just as hot, if not hotter than that. So I was like, whatever. So as a guy, yeah, no, I have nothing to say. <laughs> if I'm working with her, yeah, different story. But no, just keep quiet. That's like, that was desperate. That sounded cringy and desperate. That was bad. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so I'm going to, I'm going to bust through these real quick. Cause we'll do one more. Yeah. Cause this one's pretty funny. All right. Cause there our Wait, screens think, show up on the bottom. What? Why are you saying somebody? I think your mic is off. Oh, you're you muted, don't I tell think. me how to stream, pal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yes, I was um, saying some really good points and I was muted. All right, Thank what you. is your point? You're awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. <laughs> what is your point? Um, yeah, no, exactly. She's not going to respect you. Yeah. And, and neither would any dude. Not, like, girls will not respect you if you come at them like that. Like, you might win yeah. her over. Like, she might chuckle, but she lost respect for you. And if mm. once they lose respect for you, you now open yourself up to being taken advantage of and used and abused, and you yep. will not get anywhere from it. She will never, ever. If a woman doesn't respect you, that is a lost cause. Forget it. And mm. almost anyone. Yep. Like, the same with dudes, really. Yep. Like, yeah true true Respect. all you are is another 20 dollar bill in your pocket yeah. i think that's what i yeah. learned in my last 20 years uh, mike uh and tom uh, you know the older we get the most important thing i've learned steve in the last 20 years growing up as a man is res they will not respect if they don't respect you forget it and you yeah, need to respect yourself and once you respect yourself you command respect from the ladies. And that was an epiphany that hit me about 35 or 40 years old. Mm. Yeah. So we're going to, I'm just going to read these and then we'll get into the topic and everything. But this one is funny. There, yeah. There's one comment in here that just, it's, yeah, this is how you crush a simp. All right. So this, I don't know if anyone knows that who this have. Dingleberry is. Uh, Nick. Go, Nico, whatever. She's dumb. I don't care what she says. It's what this guy says. Um, them lips. I dream of kissing. Ugh. Ugh. This is what he said. You do know she has herpes, right? Clearly you don't follow her Instagram. And she's Ooh. posted pictures of her cold sore outbreaks. Oh, All right, guys. Oh, Here, God. This is how you end simps. You crush their dreams on every level that's You're the adorable. funniest response i ever you do know she got herpes right like <laughs> i'm not kidding the I, stuff, like i don't care like they're, they're that yeah desperate, some of them. yeah it's like wow. well, well if he's already got them then it's safe all the way <laughs> well yeah you so got a, you got a point there if no one knows i posted every tuesday we started doing a poll um right Tonight, poll is it's a little trickier. I forget who won last week. I think it, oh no, it was Gal Gadot. That's who won. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gal Gadot won. Who's the most attractive, Scarlett Johansson or Gal Gadot? Well, Gal yeah. Gadot won. What There's a bunch hell? of simps. What? She's a giraffe. You weren't. <laughs> hey, you weren't high. here, yeah. Canadian yeah. Man. <laughs> you weren't here when we came up the poll. So here's the thing: if you want to participate in the poll. Like today, when you came mm, in, as was we were not. talking about, that's how you do it. So tonight's <clears throat> poll, and I do it for three days, is who's the most based? I was there. You, that's right. Maybe you were. I don't know. <laughs> you had mic problems, so we can hear you. That's, <laughs> you, you host drops, too. <laughs> oh, man. I love you, man. Um, tonight's <laughs> poll for the next three days is... Um, Who's the most based, Jordan Peterson or Joe Rogan? So if you go to no. not, not Rank or Steve on Twitter, you can find mm -hmm. that, vote, share it, let people know. They're fun. And like I said, after the first, the one-year anniversary for you guys, um, I have a lot of ammo now, and I can roast you all very easily. So, Tom, you weren't here the first year, but Mike and Canadian Spider-Man would roast me with <laughs> short bus call sign on me. <laughs> Every stinking week, it's true. Yes, so it's yeah. it's my year. It's my year. Hey, you can't <laughs> roast your friends. Who can you roast? That's what it's about. Excellent. I know, right? They got me good. They got me some zingers. Andy, on the other hand, is really hard to, you know, that yoga master. That's is true. Really hard. To... Yeah. Oh god. So here's a question for tonight. Tonight is about the Second Amendment. It's about mm. firearms. Mm. Um, we've done two episodes of this before. Right. Um, Canadian Spider Man looked like what we are. I thought we were talking about cooking. Like cooking. It I relates. Um, so right. well, tonight we're right. talking about tonight we're talking about the Second Amendment and why it is important for men to hold on to the Second Amendment. Now mm -hmm. we've come in a little conundrum here 
because there are three Canadians and one American on this platform. Um, but we so need one here in this country. Yeah, you guys need one. And oh, why yeah, the Second yeah, Amendment is important. But you I guys have such needs. You what? I lived in Massachusetts for a year because of a girl. Okay, so it's two against two right now. Cool. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Your cops are armed like military. Holy crap, that's scary. Yeah, yeah. No, it's not. not. That's yeah. normal, man. That's For you. Normal. It never used to be. Yeah. <laughs> For me. <laughs> um, yeah. So here's the thing. If anyone in the chat... Um, in the chat on you on rumble if you have a question about firearms or any yeah. such thing of the second amendment um i will answer them or we will answer them through rants just because there's gonna be a lot of people leaving comments here and there and this is such a broad discussion that we it's it needs to be talked about um I think your cousin is driving by, Tom, because his base is going and buzzy. You had technical problems. That's what I'm going right now. But anyways. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Hold up. Um, oh? Oh. Hold up. Um, here's a question. Before we get into this, because this is very interesting now. Um I need to check something on YouTube because this is very oh. interesting. Um, oh, shit. You're still up on YouTube. But here's a question. What is a funny – what was your first time using a firearm? Oh, good question. Please let it be yeah. funny, guys. Please let it be funny. <laughs> um, let's see. Who wants to go first? I don't remember. Uh, <laughs> Canadian Spider-Man. Yeah. I was 13 and I was in the shower and no, um, <laughs> <that's a different laughs> no, um, really the first, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, no, um, the first firearm I probably ever shot would have been hunting, hunting, and it would have been a 22. And I took a shot, and I and I thought I was shooting a partridge, and I was so, and I got it. First time I shot, I got it. I brought it back, <clears throat> and uh, the, my my best friend's dad looked at it because he had been coaching me and taught me how to shoot, and he said, um, "Nope, that's a songbird. You you just shot like a, a sparrow or whatever it was. It was." We oh. can. In fact, that's yep. You just committed a crime, and now we have to bury that and uh, <laughs> never talk about it from now on. Oh, it's technically, God. it's illegal to shoot this kind of songbird. <clears throat> <laughs> so, just to clarify, someone in the Twitter or the um, YouTube chat, um, they said that I was suspended on YouTube, no, and then they said. Up. So, Oops, not Rank or Steve on X. Yes. Uh yeah. not if you go to Rank or Steve on Twitter, it is suspended. Um, it's not Rank oh. or Steve. Sorry about that. So I, I was like, ooh, did we just got did we just did I just get nuked on YouTube already? I know. Um, and then someone who's joining us, Ordy, is in the ooh, background somewhere. Oh, right on. Uh yeah. Mike. Yeah. First time I ever shot a firearm was in cadets when I was in sea cadets, believe it or not. Um, when I went to, when I went to camp um, at um, CFB uh, Cornwallis in Nova Scotia and uh, you know, trained on, trained on 22s, you know, because I was, you know, 15 at the time. So, you know, young kid and, you know, in Canada, they, have to be responsible that way. Go figure. So yeah, first firearm was a uh, was a twenty two, and I was a pretty good shot. Like I was a really good shot. You know, my grouping was like all nice and clustered together and all that, and uh, I was pretty good at it. And then after a while, 
they uh, moved me up to a um, an FNC one A one rifle, and um, you know, which is a little bit bigger. Apparently, uh, from what they told me, what was it? Tonka made the parts, which is really yeah. weird. Huh. Yeah, That's yeah, awesome. I had no idea. That is awesome. They should. And um, wow. you know what? And I actually should have kept up with it because that was a really good shot. So the power mm, felt so good. So, and that was like at uh, maybe fifty yards away or something like that. It was it was pretty good. Oh. Yeah. Nice. So, uh, Ordy, if you're there in the background, can you hear us? Ten Ten Hut. If not. We'll go to Tom. I don't remember the firearm. I know Dad. I don't know the names and stuff. It was hunting rifle. I would have been what fourteen, but I do remember the first time. Like I, now, would bows consider that? Would you classify that as a firearm per se in the same vein? Maybe no. Yeah, no. I want to learn to hunt with bow. I do. I want to learn to bow hunt. Same here. I think that would be awesome. It's fascinating, but yeah, I would have been about fourteen. Dad had a, a hunting rifle, and um, he's actually got rid of the bolt because now his grandson he doesn't. They don't. My major, my brother wants to teach him to shoot, but Dad is a little paranoid about it. But yeah, he still has that rifle. I don't know, but yeah, I would have been about fourteen. It had a little kick to it, but it was nothing super strong or anything. Just something you'd be hunting for. Twenty-two, yeah. twenty-two. Oh yeah, maybe twenty-two when you're yeah, you know, we're roughly like about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I would have been fourteen. No, uh, Ordy. Maybe his mic is off. I don't know. Anyways, he's in the background. No, okay. he's not in. He's stuck in the back door. He he had the coops. That's what coupons it was. to get out. Ah, coops. That's yeah. what. Um, for me, I was. I think can I was in Nebraska. Now? I was. Yes, I can hear you now. Okay, so, um, what? When was the first time you shot a firearm? Yeah. Okay, so. I grew up in gun culture, so I had a lot of 22s and stuff, but you wanted a funny story. And this was my first time firing yes. a big boy weapon. So I'm about 10 years old. We're out in the deep desert. My dad loads up his 3030. Remington gives me all the hold it tight, but, you know, not too tight. Take, you know, don't hold your breath when you're about to shoot. Lean into the scope. Pull the trigger. I leaned so far in. The recoil cut my eye with the scope. Ooh. He was expecting me to start bawling, crying, everything. I look up at him and go, that was fun. Can I do it again? <laughs> 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 fun. Nice. Um, have, have you ever scoped yourself? Anybody? You mean other, you mean other than no, what I just... Never. <laughs> no. 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 Not once. Have you? Gordy? Not that I, I don't think so. No, I don't think so either. Wow, we all listened to what we were being told? Holy shit. Yeah, yeah. I know. Amazing. And we'll though. also talk about gun safety too tonight. Men uh, do listen when it's about guns. Yep. Yes. No, it's the most nerve wracking thing. When you're first, when you first hold a firearm, it's very nerve wracking. Hey, yeah. Tyrone. Tyrone. Tyron. It's Tyron. 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 Yes, he does. He's not black. I don't think he's black. <laughs> Tyron, good to see. You. I've never seen your face, buddy. I've known you for years now. You might be muted. You might be muted. Yes. Or on your computer. Wow, he's way better looking than I thought. <laughs> don't, don't, don't. I thought he was like three hundred pounds. <laughs> As as no, Tyron, no. <laughs> as Tyron, not Tyron. I'm going to say Tyrone because you know. Oh uh, yeah, that'd be funny. He, yeah, it's yeah. funny, dude. Um, it is funny. When I was, I think I was 12 or 13. I it was a double barrel shotgun, and it was fun. It was a blast. I was like, I was scrawny. I was like a. 90 pounds not even and it was um where you do the skeet where you shoot up the little discs and you shoot them got both from first time ever nice. um nice yeah and then probably okay here's a question what's the highest caliber okay hang on shot? i gotta go back i gotta go back to canadian spiders that's actually what i was just describing was scoping myself 
I had to check and make sure what you meant. So yeah, mm. that was I absolutely scoped myself, but I was ten on the thirty thirty. So well, yeah, we'll, that's okay. We'll let it slip. We'll yeah. let it slip. Well, what? Okay, so um, Ordy, what's the highest caliber you've shot? Thirty 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 six. Oh, that's such a nice one. I love my thirty think- six. Canadian Centennial lever action. Ducks un- I wanted it at Ducks Unlimited, Winchester 94. Ooh. Oh. I think, or Mike. Uh, yeah, the FNC 1A1. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Military um, weapon. Yeah. That's a, I, like I said, my experience is very limited because it was just my dad. I know I I want to someday do a, the Desert Eagle or Glock because I want a handgun, but that's about the, it was like you said the twenty two was probably what it was. So. Canadian Spider Man. <laughs> yeah, what what's the most powerful handgun in the world according to Clint Eastwood? Oh, it, it, oh, forty five. Yeah, I think no, so. forty five Magnum. Mm. Yeah, wow. I think it was the 45 Magnum handgun, and then I own a 308 uh, rifle. And then nice. I don't. Yeah. No, I don't. See, with Canadian Spider Man, I would have expected, you know, with all the hunting he does and outdoorsmanship he has, I was expecting something like Elephant Gun or something like that, you know? <laughs> As the most powerful thing. I got to get a moose. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right? Power oh, no. Up. The only way we get rid of these Canadian geese with the two gauges on the duck boats. Yeah. Yeah. For me, if if Tyrone (laughs) can get here and his audio working, because he's an actual gun instructor and works at a range and stuff. And so I wanted he's perfect for this episode. Yeah, from Texas. Um, So I wanted to get his input. Because he was on your your stream, Canadian Spider Man. They were you guys were talking about firearms, and I'm like, oh my gosh. Yeah, I've known him for years. I'm in heaven. I could listen to this guy talk about firearms all day. Um, nice. For me, mm. my favorite—I I love the 357 Magnum. It is—it is one of my favorite revolvers. Um, mm. I would say probably a 308 is the biggest caliber I've used. Well, then I—I I did shoot an M16, M16 and M14. Those, mm. like, those are fun. Like I don't know if you guys have used a fully automatic. No. Um, I was that. in Nevada doing a um, a week training of gun safety, gun yeah. safety and defense training, and they had this thing where you can pay money or you had like credits, and I had credits for it, and I was doing it like burst, and the guy's like, "Look, I'll put I'll put one magazine in. You won't have to pay for this. Just hold the trigger down." He knew deep down. I've oh. never. I held it down. I had the biggest smile on my face because I realized I understood what freedom really meant. Did I hit the target? Not in jack diddly squat. (laughs) Didn't even get it. But boy, was it fun. Mm. And yeah, it's, but to me, like I eventually look at the, Oh, sorry. No, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but just what uh, Herc 130 said. Here, yeah, let me bring Herc. it up. Yeah, Herc. I'll bring it yeah. up right quick. John's here. Raquel, so hey Herc, Raquel. Herc one yeah. thirty said yeah, the M one three four. Oh yes, yeah. is another one I shot when I flew helicopters. Oh, for the oh, nice. USAAF. Yeah. I couldn't afford the ammo for a Gatling gun. Other, otherwise, <laughs> oh, that's, dude, that's a oh. oh. I am working yeah. to get my um, – so this is – I'll get into – I'm going to give a little teaser of what I what I have planned for this summer is mm-hmm. um, this summer I'm going to start a, a, a firearms show. It's all pre-recorded, and when right. I get the SIG P320 M18, <laughs> love that gun. Um, it's going to be big on me, that's for sure. It's mm-hmm. – um, I'm going to do that, so I'm going to give – gun safety tips and um yeah go from there so there's a little teaser right there hey uh, yeah. steve a quick yes. question uh 
when, when I was in New Brunswick, I'm just wondering, because it's possible that, that Mike and Tom and I were all in Boy Scouts in New Brunswick at the same time back then. There yeah. used to be this uh, Boy That's Scout cute. camp called the Flintlock Challenge, and they would fire off yes. flintlock, a Flintlock, flintlock uh, rifle. musket. And it was I've always wanted a, to do one of those. And and I did, yeah. So we saw them shoot it, uh, and that was that was all. Awesome. And I did get to shoot the flintlock uh, once, so that was kind of cool. It was put on by a skip master uh, named Herb, and, and he's passed on by now. But um, yeah, that was Herb great is fun. a so good flintlocks. name. Herb, See, yeah, they Herb take Paradise. about. I think someone said it. They take about four minutes, four to five minutes to reload. I'd be flintlock, there for twenty yeah. minutes because I don't know how to do it, but it would be fun. I feel like Mel Gibson in the Patriot. <laughs> I'd yeah, have the flintlock go. muskets. I'd be like, let's do this, baby, with the tomahawk. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now we're talking, baby. Now we're now we making butter. You know, the, the reason why nobody <laughs> believes Gen X in our stories is that I had, and I ordered this out, I believe it was Sears or JCPenney. It was a right. 44 caliber smooth bore replica ship's cannon that was fuse, powder, pad and ball and you just ram it and, and you were shooting a 44 caliber but it was a toy because it was a cannon so oh, nobody yeah. yeah no nobody believes that these things existed for us wow and they were awesome i know right oh the stuff we did as gen xers most people are like yeah right no we did oh dude no we we sure were the kick-ass generation before everything went to pop oh yeah <laughs> mm. The parents yeah, didn't I'm care. I'm hundred percent certain I've got that out of like, like I said, Sears or J.C. Penney, Montgomery Ward, some catalog. Oh. Not Soldier of Fortune, which was a great magazine for <laughs> guns and ammo. Yeah. You still got it, Ordy? No, I. Boo. We were we were out on Lake Powell, and <laughs> right the barrel dropped, and I shot a perfect hole right through the back of my friend's houseboat and <laughs> it went swimming <laughs> really but to be fair, oh my god we did invade that yeah. island nice our invasion of the sandbar <laughs> was successful nice oh my god mm. that's awesome <laughs> so i want to get into the conversation because this is because there's a lot of people scared of firearms and you shouldn't be scared of firearms I only have two questions here. Yeah, I feel like a late black. night talk show because we are a late night talk show. Everybody, <laughs> we have jokes, oh. <laughs> or so I thought. Um, yeah. These jokes are not written out for anyone. <laughs> uh, how to? Okay, so here's the first question mm -hmm. of the night, and I did put in the chat. If anyone has any questions, you can put it in a rant, and we will we will stop, or at least get to the questions. Um, and yeah yeah uh yeah so there we go just because there's a bunch of people in the conversations and so i don't want to stop everything and start looking for questions and right. stuff just mm. just put them in a well, rant real way nation gaming real way nation gaming asks hey rancor can you shoot the rifle in williamsburg hmm i think i know what he's talking about but as I'm looking this up, here's the first question. question. Mike, this is for everyone. How can guys learn and right. understand Dang. firearm safety? Okay. Well, I can only speak like the rest of my Canadians here. You know, obviously, first and foremost, you know, realize that firearms are tools. They're basically a tool, right? They're not meant, you know, if you just lay it on a table, it ain't going to jump out and friggin, you know, shoot you in the ass or anything like that. It's a tool and it's mm. meant for protecting or going hunting. And that's essentially it, right? Or keeping the king out Perfect. of your business. That's right. Exactly. And if that happens, throw tea additionally too. That might be a deterrent as well. <laughs> um, but no, you know, if you're interested in getting a firearm, uh take a gun safety course it's as simple as that right and ask questions you know go to a go to a gun shop ask questions you know like i've never owned a firearm before if you've never owned a firearm uh you know uh ask the people there because they're quite knowledgeable 
what should I start off with? You know, they'll ask you questions. Well, okay, is this for recreational use or is this to go out hunting or something like that, right? They will ask you questions to find out what you're going to be using it for. It's as simple as that. And from there, uh, you know, generally up here in Canada, for example, um, you know, you do have to take a firearms course. It's as simple as that, right? Uh, you know, you will have to go through a background check and I'm imagining that's the same thing in the States as well. You know, you will go through a background check as far as I know. Um, you know, once you take the course, once you pass it, you know, then the next thing is being able to learn how to fire it. And generally like there's a couple of gun ranges in, uh, in Calgary, for example, where they sell firearms, where they do also have a shooting range on top of that, they will have an instructor alongside with you, and they will teach you what the components of a firearm is, how to handle it properly, how you're going to end up cleaning it, how to end up storing it properly. Um, you know, once the safety is on or if it's off, right? What kind of ammo that you're going to be using, how to fire it properly. Listen to everything because the worst thing you can do is just immediately buy yourself a firearm of any sort and just like you know, pew 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 think that you some sort of gangster or something like that holding it like that and you're only going to end up freaking hurting yourself like the dumb idiots that you potentially could be. So just listen carefully. It's the best mm -hmm. thing that you can do. You know, educate yourself. Yeah, to and... your point. I mean. Down, yes. down here, we have a lot of game associations too. It's like I know, like in California, Ducks Unlimited, mm -hmm. Ducks Unlimited is way more prolific than the NRA. So you can get classes from Ducks Unlimited, uh, California Mule Deer Association, and like you said, talk to your local gun stores, your your FFAs, your your FFL, sorry, and uh, you know, they'll they'll get you in the right direction. And yeah. Hmm. yeah, there's many gun clubs, like you said, ranges. And, the, the, your ability to draw from information is just is limited only by your ability, hmm. you know, your, your, your desire. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Tyron, are we able to Good hear you? Evening gentlemen. Can you hear me this time? Tyron. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Oh my <laughs> I got about can hear you. <laughs> I got about awesome. six grand worth of hardware. <laughs> Two laptops, a couple of mobile phones, and finally we got it working. It's good to be here with the gentleman. Bloody hell! Oh, welcome to so the show. So you didn't man. turn welcome it on and bed. off. Yeah, oh, I did all of that. I made sure it was plugged in. Um, all of that. It's good to be oh, here, with the gentleman. Well, welcome to the show. Um, here's yeah, a man. question I have for everyone um, that's going to be answering. Um, and for you, I'm going to have you ask the, answer this one because you probably are the most expert out of all of us on this. And um, how can guys learn and understand firearm safeties? Were you asking me this one first? Well, Mike went first and then you popped up and I was like, we'll, we'll come with you. Or do you want to wait? We can have you wait last if you want. Oh, yeah. Let me get settled in. Um, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, Canadian Spider Man. <laughs> it's his first time on Matter Rap. You know <laughs> <laughs> right on the Throw spot. Him right under the bus. Get hey, him out there. Cheers. I don't know what you're drinking, Tyron, but cheers, Drive buddy. <laughs> cheers, fellas. Uh, Canadian Spider Man. Yes, sir. What? How can we teach uh, people about firearm safety? Um, you know what? Take them out. Uh, we go probably once a week or once every two weeks at least out here, just uh, shooting stuff, target shooting and, and whatnot. We have a gun club that's 10 minutes from my door, uh, a range, I mean. And, and take take people out uh, with you and go shooting things. And if you notice them, even if they might be older than you, even if they are um, more experienced than you, uh, if you see them doing something that is not gun safe uh, mm. and you want to teach them and educate them, or if they're brand new, um, let them know. Speak up. This is not one of those things where you just let it slide. 
you absolutely draw it to their attention. And even if you have to use humor to do it, um, and, you know, and they might shrug it off the first 20 times you bring it up, but eventually I've got personal experiences. They will start to take it seriously. You know, if you um, muzzle fly me again, have... I will crease your forehead with the butt of my rifle. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I mean, Tyron, I know you were telling me a wicked story. There's a lot of stories about people that do stupid things. And some of them are by on paper, very qualified. So speak out at, so the best way you can teach people is take them out, go, go, go shooting with them. And, and, and don't be afraid to say something. If, if something catches your eye. Yeah. Uh, Ordy. Yeah, I answered that. I was the one talking about Guns Unlimited in California and everything. Oh, yeah. I sorry know. about that. I know you're See, so used to me not being around. That, you know. It's been a while, man. I just, <laughs> yeah. Because everyone, the, at the point is, like, when I get to one person, they start answering, answering the question. Other people will chime in. So it's, I get really, oh, the I need to go I down the to. line. That's what I got to do. Go down the line. It'll be fine. Serpentine, uh, Babu. Serpentine. <laughs> uh, Tom. <laughs> Um, it well, was said earlier or something. I mean, we first respect it, you know, tell everybody you got to respect it because it is a tool, you know, and um, like when you're storing it away, if you're carrying it away, make sure safeties are on and such. Um, it was also said, you know, talk to everybody. If you see somebody not doing something right, let them know and they might not listen. It, not, no matter their age. Again, as you, you said, Steve, it's, it's like doesn't matter their age or whatever. If they're making something a mistake, this is something that could endanger people and yourself. So you educate somebody, you see if you see something wrong again, teach them about the safety, make sure if you're storing it, that's on. And just, you know, take classes, take courses. There's plenty out there. There's plenty of places, uh, places you can go locally probably to go shooting and teach yourself and also have somebody else with you. I'd say have somebody that has experience with you, learn under them. And uh, yeah, that's the best you really can say. Respect the tool, respect the guns, respect for what they are. Yeah, 100%. I... I went a couple weeks ago, a few weeks ago, actually, almost a month maybe, and my buddy has an open field, massive land, and he's like, yeah, I, I built my own little gun range stuff. And I was like, oh, that's cool. So we all went, and there's one guy, he didn't know much with guns, and he, I brought a 357 Magnum. He loved it. He fell in love with that thing, and pretty much every guy who's – I think everyone except one guy who had a three three fifty seven snub nose, mm. and I thought, hey, I'm going to put a three fifty seven round in there. Um, I'm never going to do that again because <laughs> <laughs> I handled it really well, but man, it had a kick to it. I was like, dude, it tore up my hand. I was like, this is insane. <laughs> but <laughs> it was it was the chance for me what to actually learn? teach someone. Yeah, lesson learned. Don't, don't uh, just because it's a smaller gun doesn't mean it's not powerful, <laughs> especially with the three fifty seven. <laughs> oh my god, that's I hilarious! Boom. And then um, I had one one of my buddies. I had one round of a three fifty seven, and they said, "Okay." And no, one of the other guys did. I was like, "Let's put it in the three fifty seven Magnum," and he's like, "Here's the thing: you'll shoot it, but." It would be kind of like a Russian roulette is one round, but I won't know which round it it's chambered in or put mm. in. He put in the last one, and I was like, I was thinking he didn't put it in. And it was the last one. It it got me more <laughs> doing that and helped train me of like not anticipating it because that's the thing. Everyone anticipates mm -hmm. and like respect, respect right. it. It's not, right. it's not a toy. It's not, it's – it's something that can save your life. It's it's made to it's a survival kit. It's it's nothing like what the news says. Like an AR can shoot a thousand rounds in a second. I don't I don't know what type of AR you got if that can do that. But props because oh, I want to shoot it. <laughs> but everyone, one of the guy I don't know who mentioned it, but it's uh, muzzle flash. Mm. Here's one thing: don't ever mm. do that. But also, beginners, some people, and I've done it too, where it wasn't loaded, and it, it happened just out of instinct where I'm going up in the range before I put the magazine in, and someone said, hey, muzzle flash. Here's the thing. If someone corrects you, like yells at you because you're wearing headphones, it's okay. 
because there's they're yelling to get your attention to correct yourself. Mm. And when you first, like when I first started using yeah. firearms, there was a lot of corrections I had to do. I was not really good at it at first. I couldn't hit a target whether you could. I, good luck, man. It's, it's like when I shot the M14, he just said, hold it down. I just, not a single shot in the target. But the moment some people who don't like firearms, and I've taken some people who were very against it, I was like, let's just go to the range and just give it a chance. What's gonna hurt? Yeah. I always what I always do is I'm like, look, we'll tr we'll teach you the proper way. And I, you're right, Tom. Go with someone who knows what they're doing. I always say go with a group. It's better that mm -hmm. way. It makes it a little bit more fun. It's not because it can be a little awkward. It's like where it's like, well, this instructor or who's teaching me is like this and that. It's like if you go with a group, you can learn from other people. Like I've been shooting for a few years. I still learn from someone else that's been doing it a little bit longer than me. You learn new things and it's okay. Just be humble about it and don't be an arrogant type person goes to range. I know what I'm doing. You're strapped to the nines of all the military tactical stuff. Okay. There Rambo, you're not going to do Jack diddly. <laughs> Just go, go to the range, have fun, learn, practice. Um, I always tell people who, who are against firearms. Hey, if you go with me and you enjoy it. Let's go look for a gun firearm that you want to get, and I'll take you out for lunch. That's how you kind of – it's a little bait there. I'm baiting you into doing this. And then, yeah, it's – because once the moment they actually shoot the fire, I always start them with a 9. Never hire a 9. That's a good one. 22 is a good one. I love – 22s are fun. I've learned that. And I'm you'll see a smile. Fun. Especially with the guys, they get a smile on their face. And they're like, okay, I understand this a little bit more. I'm enjoying yeah. this. And for me, for me, I'm always, whenever I'm holding a firearm, I'm so safe. It's like, dude, what if this thing, even if it's not loaded, what if this thing goes off? Like, keep your finger off the trigger. Um, Ty Tyron, not Tyrone, Tyron. You got it, man. Tyron. <laughs> yeah. <I guess>, um, <laughs> Steve knows yeah. you. I, I'm pretty fortunate in that I get to work at a gun range every day. You and, lucky uh, man. Yes. <laughs> man. I landed in Texas. You son of and, a bitch. Yeah, I thought, what's the most Texan <laughs> job I can do? Gun range. So yes. that's what I do, and I love it. Um, yeah. And I guess we see people of all levels of experience come in, you know, and I've, I was just a hobby or a, a, like, a, like a target shooter back in Australia. I did a lot of hunting as well as a kid. Um, yeah. I grew up in regional areas, so shooting rabbits, foxes, feral cats, kangaroos, lots of kangaroos. They are delicious. Um, but yes. uh, we we lost access to our firearms back in about 97 um, when we had one incident and the federal government decided to confiscate all pretty much all firearms. Uh, wow. If you didn't have a, a legitimate reason for owning one. Um especially uh, things like semi-automatics, um, oh, yeah. uh, pump-action shotguns and things like that. We're all gone. So I think... That was um, in Port Arthur, Tasmania? That was, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I visited so, there. Yeah, it was, uh, it, was, it was a pretty big deal at the time, and, and the federal government bought... They bought back the guns, and Australia didn't really ask questions about that at the time, and I really feel like they probably should have. We don't have a Bill of Rights like you guys do in the States. Um, and mm -hmm. I think I heard you saying something before, Steve, about getting onto your members of parliament about a bill of rights. It's, I think it's something. Yeah, that citizens no, need going I've through. already written them T tonight. Uh, it's awesome. Dude. Coincidentally, this show, Steve, inspired me to write my members of parliament <laughs> questioning yeah. how police, I'm saving police Canada, baby. <laughs> have in this country. And it's really bad right I, now here. Yeah. Police brutality is a real thing, Tyron. And and you had people in Melbourne that were literally locked in their apartment blocks. And if they were starving to death, they had no means. They had no police, firepower. Police brutality yeah. really took off during uh, the little sickness uh, that was going around there for a little bit. The mm -hmm. police had all sorts of extraordinary powers they'd never had before. And they really did overstep and overreach. It was phenomenal. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, I'm not going to say that an armed society might have changed the outcome necessarily because that's purely speculative and hypothetical, but um, 
I think people would think twice. When I first moved to Texas, I just realized like it was it was really easy to notice that people were super friendly here, just always polite. And um and I commented on it one day and it was the guy who was installing our internet said, Sir, an armed society is a polite society. And that yeah. rings true, man. I tell you what, like I think people think twice about getting up in your face in Texas. Um Police or otherwise, I would think it's. Um, well, you notice yeah. how the knockout game doesn't happen in places that don't have heavy gun laws. Mm. Happens in California, not Texas. True. Well, right. the guy. Yeah, I'm kind of blessed hits to be in a... Australia. King hits. Ah. Mm. I'm kind of blessed with a group of guys in the couples group I'm in with my wife, and when we first started joining, I was like, "Oh man, California." I'm not originally from California. I'm. From straight from the south and midwest like where i grew up around guns around me it was just that was the culture and that was the thing and you're right tyron that it's people are polite like it's it's not this scare tactic like you see on social media or the news where you see a guy has like i which i don't know why someone has like three firearms two in the back and then two actually four two in the sides and then two in the back and then he has like why well, yeah, true. Yeah. yeah, it is none of your business. But it, at the same time, I was like, that's a little excessive. But hey, more power to you, man. Like, hey, if you want to do that, do that. But and then you'll see people in California freak out about it or big cities mainly freak out about it. And then you go to the South to like, he's probably the nice. He'll probably cook you a five course meal. Like yeah. probably the nicest people. It's because they're not all it's not how the media portrays it to be. It's when you yeah there's idiots and people in the media have never shouldn't. shot a firearm and when they do they kill a producer and director or something yeah mm-hmm. yeah imagine like that <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's more of get to know people that's the thing i think when you get younger people like what i do i try to get guys who are in college or who are the story boys and all that stuff like get him out of the comfort zone because once they actually shoot a firearm, I had one friend, he's like, he saw at the group thing and, or no, it was a different time. Um, one of my buddies had a 357 and the guy who never really shot guns, his first one, he's like, I want, I want to try that. I was like, pick out any gun. He had preference all firearms that he could pick. I was like, right. I was like, please pick a nine millimeter. So it's not going to freak you out. Cause if you go to a higher caliber, you're going to get, scared okay okay question to gun experts on a scale of one to ten how for those that don't know how powerful is a nine millimeter on a scale of one to ten it can do damage but it's not that powerful the obvious answer is about nine millimeters but i couldn't i just can't (laughs) it's a good depends where you're aiming for but here's the thing it's my my friend Who's never shot? He was like, "I want to pick that," and he picked the three fifty seven. Loved it. It's awesome. He's like, "I understand it now more." Go bigger, go. And not because it's actually yeah. fun. Like if you go out and hang out, one of the rules is you never drink before you use firearm. Go to range. Do that yeah. after. Yeah. Do that after. That's what we did. We ended up like a few months, like a month ago, we ended up having scotch and whiskey after, and we just. It was a blast. It's you take turns and all that stuff. I like doing the open range just because you can do a mag dump right at the end. Just for, if you want to blow a hundred bucks in five seconds, <laughs> that's how you do it. And it's it's a lot of fun because it's just it's an atmosphere where guys can bond together. You get to learn. You get like if you don't know someone and you're like oh, I I would never fit in with that type of person. And you get to talk to them. You have yeah. you start it's a really a bonding. It's a really good point. Like uh, the the where everyone has something in common. It's like the gym. If you go to the gym, you've got fitness in common, right? You can start a conversation straight up, um, and that's it's the same sort of deal at the range. It doesn't matter whether you're young or old. It doesn't matter whether you're a bloke or a, a lady. Um, it, it it really it's it's for everybody. We have uh, families bring their kids in and. Kids can shoot there from as young as eight years old. 
and obviously we will uh, give them a, a very good safety drill. But typically, if parents are bringing their kids in, they're bringing their kids in to teach them safety in the first instance, and they're very responsible, yeah. and they're, they're very conscious of how dangerous a firearm can be in inexperienced hands. So they, um, they'll they ask for assistance if they need it. Otherwise, you know, it's a, it's one of those things, isn't it, where a father or a mum takes their, their, their kid out and teaches them how to operate a firearm. It's, it's, it's normal here in Texas, um, and it's a part of life, whether it's hunting or just uh, sports. I had, you know, I had a, an Uber driver a few months ago uh, who was a little bit shocked that I worked at a gun range, and she's like, but you're Australian, and I'm like, that's why I work there typically, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but um, <laughs> making up for lost time, woman. Yeah. But yeah. She, uh, <laughs> she said, oh, I would... <laughs> I would never let my daughter uh, go somewhere like that or shoot firearms. And I said, well, how old's your daughter? And she said, 13. And I said, well, listen, woman, she's going to be going to parties. She's been, she'll be going to friends' houses and there will be firearms there. It's Texas. And you want your daughter yeah. to have experience with handling firearms, whether it's a revolver, an automatic, a rifle, a shotgun, whatever. Um, if you want her to be the responsible one in the room and know how to pick that firearm up, handle it, demonstrate that it's safe and clear, and say, all right, let's leave this alone. Firearms aren't for playing with. You want your son or your daughter to be that kid in the room. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's, yeah. and she's like, yes. good point, good point. So I gave her some free passes. I haven't seen her, but, um, uh, you know, I told her we did have other other facilities. She could have gone to one of the other ones closer to where she lived. But uh, it's it's funny when, when you were saying just before as well that when you get, uh people who haven't shot before and they do shoot they will get that smile on their face they're like oh my goodness that was fun do you know what i mean it it really is a good time it, like everyone has a good time shooting um it's a base yeah. instinct you just you gotta enjoy it when you mm. you know it's yeah you, know, you do that with archery or anything else too you get yeah. that same look you know yeah who don't have the training you know, like, is it safer to, I mean, is, is the likelihood more that if, if a kid has never had the training and so they'll never come into contact with a gun and so they'll never have to deal with it, they'll never get shot? Or is it more likely where you live that they will come into contact and it's better they have the training? Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. hundred percent. My favorite uh, stories kind of happened in my first few weeks at working at the range. And uh, I had this lady from california very much a hardcore liberal very anti-guns but her two eldest sons wanted to shoot and they wanted to bring their father the father was down for it but he was keeping quiet the wife's like oh i object to this i object and every like she had her arms crossed she was shaking her head and she was very like very locked up closed up body language and so my first thing was just to engage with her as the boss of the family and just to say hey look um you know, we're going to make this as fun and as safe as possible for you guys. And, uh, you know, I want you to be able to demonstrate uh, for your family how you can do this as safely as possible. So as soon as I handed her the first firearm, she was shocked. She's like, oh, me, me. And she's like, she was, uh, she was a little bit panicky at first. She's like, oh, no, I don't want to be a part of this. I just want to watch. And I said, well, if you're going to be out on the range, I want uh, to at least know that you can handle the firearm safely. So we started her yeah. out with uh, a little twenty-two. Um, we got her and, and the family out on the range. I watched them uh, shoot after a good safety demonstration and uh, said, right, you'll be, you'll be good for the next 10 minutes or so. Yep, excellent. Left them on the range and then we upgraded them from a little Glock uh, 44, which is a 22 caliber, to the Glock 19. Same frame, a little bit heavier, but uh, shoots 9 millimeter and it's a, it's a lot more fun and a lot more bang for your buck. And mm. she shot that and she was fine with it. She had a great time. She's got a, got that smile growing on her face. Nice. And I came out to the boys and I said, it's my wet dream tonight to get that woman on an AR. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, did she? Did she? <laughs> we took, we took nice. the, little, uh, the little Ruger 10 nice. uh, 22 out. She shot the, the Ruger rifle and then we had a little uh, AR on, a, on the 22. Took that out to her. She shot that. And then I took the the uh, the full size um, Daniel Defense with two two three and an EOTech uh, holographic optic on top, and uh, she got her bang for a buck. I'm telling you that much. 
after that she came out she had the biggest smile she's like i had no idea it was so much fun that was the most fun i've had in, in so long so long she said how much are your memberships can we get a membership can we get one tonight <laughs> she was there for about two and a half hours it was closing time i told her to come back tomorrow it was awesome i have chills <laughs> that is awesome that, man oh yeah. and that's the thing it's amazing <laughs> on how many liberal-minded people for lack of a better term basically um you know once they fire a firearm of any sort they're like you know oh my gosh i didn't realize you know i i had no idea right you know once once they realize that you know the safety that's involved and whatnot it can be just just as fun as anything else and yeah. you yes. know some of them even yeah. get hooked on it you know yeah well they're and, control yeah yeah Exactly. I'm kidding. So, I'm kidding. So <laughs> my my I'm saving up to get my first gun, which is a Sig P320 M18, because California is mm -hmm. like we're gonna put a safety thing in here. It's a really dumb, really mm -hmm. stupid safety where you can actually have a round in there supposedly, and you could take the mag out and it won't mm -hmm. fire it. Mm -hmm. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Just dumbest uh, thing. It makes me. It makes me just cringe knowing that that can be possible. I'm Are never going to setting test up it for out. failure. Yeah. Well, and, yeah, at least they've yeah. gotten past that whole micro stamping law that doesn't exist anywhere. Yeah, I mean, that's why that's... we haven't been able to get Colt and Sig and a lot of other manufacturers in the state because yeah. you you're requiring us to do something that doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. Right. And so my, my wife's dad, he has, he has firearms, mainly Glocks. And then my brother-in-law, uh, who introduced, I was going to get a Glock and then I was introduced to what SIG is. Mm. Um, I fucking love SIG. SIG, I under, I get it now. I was like, all right. Cause I was, I always, this is what I, my whole thing is. If you want to learn on editing your phone or whatever, the first thing you learned on go with that that's your comfort zone and for me i first learned how to use a handgun was a glock and i was like you know what i'm gonna do a glock 19 cool and then my brother-in-law he had a sig 226 i think it was and i oh man i was like you know screw the glock <laughs> <laughs> You know, I think because yeah. I would tell people, my friends, and I was like, Yeah, who own guns? I was like, Yeah, I'm gonna get a Glock. And they just looked at me like I'm just some bastard. And they're like, Really? A Glock? <laughs> and I was like, And then I, I was like, I understand it. It's it's a lot of fun. And it's it's one of those things where if you get around people who know, like, I can go to someone who's been using firearms for. 50 years and I can learn something totally different. And I'm like, Oh, that actually works. Mm -hmm. It's a comfort thing. It's, mm -hmm. I yeah. remember there was when I was at, I spent a week in Nevada doing the gun safety course, which that's the thing. If you want, if you're not sure, sure about yourself or you're like, you know what? I don't trust the people that own the firearms to teach me, go to a, go to a range and do a mm -hmm. gun safety course, like at least four days, learn that yeah. tool. Cause when I went, there's a thing called front sight in Nevada and it's changed a little bit over the years. And in the first day I learned 20% more than what the average American knows about firearms. And it's fantastic. Great. Four days exhausting after you're like, Oh my gosh, I'm tired. Mm -hmm. I have band-aids because I'm loading, doing all this stuff, but you learn so much from instructors that that's what they are because they are former police officers for like they were in the military that's their thing so it's like hey i want to teach people how to do this stuff and it's a lot of fun it's mm. it's fantastic mm. and then you're going to find yourself watching terran tactical watching all these <laughs> that's the other thing i would i would definitely go on youtube or rumble and look up videos of these people who do these things and you mm -hmm. learn from right. them and it's they know what to do but right quick I have Going back to the thing you said earlier, you know what they have yes. to say. You know what they, you know what they say about Glocks, right? It's a gun. Yeah, it's a gun. There's nothing. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. meh. It, it's a gun. <laughs> well, the thing is, it's they all do the same thing. Right. But Some meh. it's like Sig is not much of a recoil. Like, it's 
it is what it is. If, I'm never gonna judge someone who if they like, oh yeah, I got a Glock. Okay, that's cool. Like, you want to go to range? Cool. Well, what every like, every firearm's tell? different, right? Like, um, oh, and they are. We have we have. <laughs> uh, um, Let me tell you about my 1911. <laughs> <laughs> we get a lot of that. Trust me, it's Cheater. the best firearm. It's the only firearm you'll ever need. Oh, do you do you conceal carry that? Not all the time. <laughs> no. Okay. So we we are. Uh, we have um, a lot of folks that will come in and say, look, my best friend told me to get this gun. Is it good? Well, that's for you to find out. Do you know what I mean? Like um, yeah. until you've taken that out onto the range and you've shot it yourself, um, you you don't know what that's going to be like for you. When I first handled a SIG P365X, um, I was like, this is going to be my first uh, concealed firearm. And I shot with it and I shot trash with it. Now, the it was just too snappy um mm -hmm. and i didn't i just didn't like it so i waited and i waited and the first gun that i bought or that i had bought for me my wife bought that for me was uh the canic elite combat and that is yeah, a, that wife. is a little that's a little race gun that one it's it's beautiful i love it it's my fave uh and the trigger system on it is insane so i was used to that trigger system so when the canic mc9 came out which is a subcompact um i trans i transferred straight across to that trigger system and i can't miss with the thing so that's obviously going to be my self-defense gun um i i love it although i have had some problems with it this week and i do need to get a spare part from canic so mm. let's hope they come through on that one but yeah my my buddy got the um the viper turn tactical viper gun oh yeah he spent some dollars a, a lot it's yeah. i looked it up i was like hey i want that gun and i looked it up i was like i don't want that gun <laughs> he had a video and his hand did not move yes yeah. he said it's like nothing you ever so when i go meet up with him soon it's i'm gonna test it out and i'm very take a couple hundred rounds for sure oh, i'm yeah. super looking forward to canic's new release that's coming out um they've got the tti combat and they'll be making that with Taryn here in, I think, in Florida. So that's exciting. That's a, that's a good one. I. That's a pretty gun. Steve. Yes. I, I have a, how, how many Americans do we have on the panel now? I, I guess Tyron kind of counts. I'll, you are a new one. I'll take you. Uh, question I, for the Americans: <laughs> How how we're three how and three America right be, now. It's fine. How would America be different? If you didn't have, if you've never had the Second Amendment, how different? So I'm going to get into that. That's a good had. question. Yeah. So we'll answer that question, and then actually we'll go into that. That's that literally is this question right here. You beat That's me to it. So say that question one more time. How would America be different, or how America, how different would it be if you didn't have the Second Amendment? If you never had it. Um, mm. I'll start with that one. Yeah. Yeah, it wouldn't because that was, a be, you know, <laughs> the Bill of Rights is not in numerical order officially, but bearing arms based off of what we had just endured through the tyranny of Brown, mm. without that, no, none of the states would have agreed on anything else. Mm. It would have mm -hmm. just been a whole collection of colonies doomed to fail that it was that important that i mean you know a lot of people oh, you know you'll see a lot of it you know the commentary on social media is well you know the founders didn't imagine you know private ownership of military weapons i'm sorry the largest the largest owner of cannon in the world post 1776 were private individuals that's right hmm. you're goddamn so, right yeah yeah so it wouldn't america would there wouldn't have been an america in the first place so hmm. yeah we we would have been speaking german <laughs> like we would like have French. been britain and then speaking it's i know people in canada they don't understand this and it's not i'm not bagging on canadians yeah. i know they want the second amendment as much as everybody else um, he did 12. <laughs> yeah the moment you take away that i think that's what the, a lot of people don't understand in the community of anti-firearms is they don't understand how important 
it is. Because look at Germany. Yeah. The moment, or yep. Russia, the moment you take away someone's rights to own a firearm for protection is the moment you're allowing the government to tell you, hey, I, I'm going to tell you whatever you need to do. And you have no yes. ifs, ands, yep. or buts. It's the reason why Japan said, hey, we're never going to invade America because they have a gun behind behind every blade of glass. It's ridiculous yep. how yep. much yep. firearms. But here's the thing that here's the beauty behind the second amendment is it protects us from being a dealing with the tyrannical government. Mm -hmm. yep. That's what it is. And technically we yep. can own every single weapon that the, that the military owns. So. And so why shouldn't I mean, you be able to. What? Why shouldn't. Why? If what are they assuming that you're a criminal? Are they. Uh, starting with the assumption that you're a criminal and you're going to use it for nefarious purposes? No. If your government no. can have that weapon, you as an upstanding citizen should have that weapon. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And yeah. my understanding is originally it was by law that you were supposed to carry your weapon as a, citi as a citizen of the United States into yeah. courtrooms, into post offices, into federal buildings to make sure mm -hmm. that law yeah. was carried out. Yeah. Here's the other thing that and a lot it of was also to protect the First <laughs> Amendment as well. Yeah. And all the other yeah. things. And I'll let someone else speak up. Yeah. It's. Mm. I just lost my train of thought. Hold on. I'll let someone else jump in. Just on I'll that, with, my uh, <laughs> just extending on what Steve said, when I went to Austin with my son recently, when he came over from Oz, uh, we went to to visit the Capitol building. And uh, for, for those folks who don't know, you have to line up and go through metal detectors uh, at the Capitol building unless you've got your license to carry. And if you're carrying a firearm, you just walk straight through the other side, you swipe your LTC and you walk through. You don't have to go through the metal detectors. They will allow you to carry in the Texas Capitol. And that's that I reckon is just extending to what Steve said. And that's, you know, I, I, I just think that's a freedom that it is a testament to a lot in this country. It's, it's, it's something to be like, mm. it's a, that is a huge privilege for citizens to have, or all those folks like me who are hoping to become a citizen. Yeah. We hope to get you get there. <clears throat> what my thought was, it just came to me is a lot of people, liberals that they, they think that the gov that we work for the government. No, in the States, it's the government works for us. And we've kind mm -hmm. of become very relaxed, comfortable, mm -hmm. let the yeah. government do whatever they want. When you take, when the government, because in the States, they want, they're trying to, even though they're like, they say, no, we're not going to take away mm -hmm. your guns. It's, they want to, so they can dismantle us. Good luck. I don't know if they've ever met a hillbilly or a hick, but um, good luck. I've been to some of those guys' places. Scares the living bejesus out of me. They got booby traps all yeah. over. <laughs> yeah. It's it's, well, it's I mean, kind of my it's... playground, but <laughs> well, I mean, even a few years ago, um, up here in Canada in Alberta, there was a flood in southern Alberta uh that required a couple of towns to actually evacuate, right? That a lot of people had to leave their homes and whatnot. And the real scary thing about the whole matter is that before they allowed the citizens to go back to their homes, uh, the police were in there beforehand. And what ended up happening is they went into people's homes and took their, took their firearms. There was no warrant. There was no uh, no orders or anything like that to do it. No no search warrants. No. Uh, you know, no proclamation made or anything like that. They just went in, took their guns. And there were a mm -hmm. lot of piss off <laughs> Albertans that, that, oh boy, they made their voices known, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's the thing, that's the thing about this province, at least, right? At least in Canada. And that's why I think, you know, our current government does not like this province in particular because I think we have more in common with America than the rest of the country, which is actually mm -hmm. kind of strange to say. Yeah, but it's sad. It's sad. You know, but it's but it's fact. Yeah. It's fact. You know, it's yeah. it's not like you know we're like we're just clutching on to our 
firearms and just, oh, no, we just love our guns so much. No, because we got a bunch of farmers out here and a bunch of people yeah. that go out hunting and whatnot. Um, that, that well, you're basically the Midwest North. Go out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's they basically what we are, right? They are courteous. Yeah. But, you know. And, and and this is just an overextension of power. And yeah, that's why, for example, Canada needs a Second Amendment. You know, but it's not going to happen. Just a little quick example, if I may, just quickly. Um, yeah, yeah. You can have handguns in your house anymore. And now look at what the, the police, the RCMP, is telling people in Ontario. Leave your car keys in the front of your house. Just let them steal mm. your shit. You can't protect your items anymore because they don't want that to happen. Yeah. What the hell? Like, no, and, and if you uh, shoot somebody that's stealing stuff from your own house, no, you can't do that, you know? I'm yeah, sorry. If you come in my house, you're not leaving. Yes, yes, exactly. If you're there for well, other see, the, the thing, The thing is, in Canada, though, the law clearly states, right, that equal measurements may be taken if somebody is breaking into your home, into your property... Uh, to defend yourself. So what that essentially means that in Canada, say if somebody is coming in, breaking into your house and they got a baseball bat, then you can meet them with the same excessive force that they're using. Now, if they come into your home with a firearm, then yes, you can defend yourself without criminal repercussions if you meet them with the same force. So but that's when you're promoting it. That's when you throw. That's when you throw your burner weapon down on their side after you. Yeah, so exactly. what you're saying is, if they come in with a bat, you hit them. Yep. You just get them with you the bat. You yourself with the same thing. That's and right. And then you just beat them with the bat, and then hide the hole. <laughs> but the fact that we're promoting people to leave your car keys out because people were getting their car stolen, they don't want people defending their items. And it's like that, no. that's something they promoted. It was in the, they openly said that. I'm like, what is your problem? Yep. Like you're they not actually, to... they learned that from California because now they don't have to report car theft if nobody's reporting car theft. So car theft goes down yeah. because nobody's reporting yeah. it to the cops. Yeah, so exactly. hey, look, we're 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 winning on the war on crime. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, there was a there was a county in Florida, um, and we'll get to tip of the hat pretty soon. But there was a county in Florida, and I told Gary and of this. I think yesterday. Yeah, we we're making chili for um, a meeting yesterday, and there was a count. There was a sheriff from one of the counties, Sarasota County, I think, or somewhere in Florida, and he's like, "We want you to shoot him. It takes away most of our work here." I'm like, can yeah. we have all sheriffs that like <laughs> promotes that? Like, defend your house, defend your property here in California. Good luck, but and your family and your own well being. Yeah. You know? It's yeah, like my wife, we were watching a movie, and I live in kind of a sketch area, and they have fireworks every once in a while that goes off. And then I can hear, oh, that's a nine, that's a 50. Wow. I don't know why you're using a 50, but okay. And <laughs> yeah. my wife was like, well, how do you know? It's like, Trust me, I know this. And gophers. Yeah, gophers. Yeah. Bill Murray. Uh, Alex yeah. Jones. Well, no, because no, you can what? actually penetrate. The <laughs> <laughs> but my wife goes, she goes, she asked me a good question. She's like, what would you do? Um, this is before I took the test to get to get my card so I could get a gun, which is stupid. I don't think any American needs to take a test. I think that, yeah, the only thing I think in – America in the states or in general is a background check. That's it. Yeah. Like, and yeah. maybe, maybe a test to see if you're <coughs> psychologically there. Cause it's like, if you're yeah. a little unhinged and you have a lot of issues, I get like PTSD. Okay. I can kind of, yeah. yeah. I will, I will meet you halfway on some of the stuff, but right. you don't, you don't need to, restrict everything and like when trump yes. banned the uh, bump stock that was the only thing i was like you know what that's kind of smart because i've used the bump stock it is the dumbest thing it's not mm -hmm. accurate to me it's not i'm like eh. mm -hmm. and a lot of gun lovers were like what do you mean and i was like trust me on this one it's it's one of the most pointless little gimmicks to put on it that mm. to me it is because it's like it, it also it also depends what pistol you're putting it on as well because you can get an ar pistol you can get or like so it's shorter than a short barrel rifle 
Uh, mm -hmm. and, and that thing would, it's, it's a bit, it comes down to about the size of an MP5 with a foldable, uh, butt stock. Those things are quite handy. Just saying. They had me an MP5. They, they can be, <laughs> but it's like, it's like the average person, like me, I'm not going to use it cause I'm not well-trained in it. Mm -hmm. You have to be well-trained in stuff, but I've seen people who use it and they're just miserable shots. They're just like. They just did it because it looks cool and all that stuff. That's that's the other thing. It's like, don't get a firearm to look cool. You're getting it to protect yourself. Yes. I always say this. get If you're going to get a home defense gun, get that. But if you want something to kind of be yeah. all flashy and stuff, that's okay. Just get a second one. That's like the range gun where mm. you can actually train yourself. And my wife asked me, she's like, well, what would you use to protect yourself? I love knives. I'm a knife <laughs> fanatic. Yes, I have, within 20 I've, feet, you're better off with a knife. Mm. It's well that that theory has been kind of it's, it's proven time and time again. Yes, it has. Yeah, it's true. It's yeah. It depends on how athletic you are. <laughs> it, it does. It does. <laughs> it does depend. But it's like I told my wife. I was like, when we oh, first moved into happened. this place, I was like, you know what? I have a Louisville Slugger bat. That'll do it. And then I ended yeah. up finding knives are my favorite thing. And then. Ooh. My wife goes, are you going to get another tattoo? And I was like, no, I think I'm just going to get firearms. I think that's my <laughs> new hobby. So Instead of tattoos, I mean, I got like 20 tattoos. I'm just going to get firearms. <laughs> for the licensing Random. for you to get firearms in America, how easy is it for your ex-wife to fuck with you so you can't own firearms? Depends on the state. If yeah, you gotta remember we're 50 or... small countries, so because I've heard of it's... some guys having to kowtow to their wives because they were scared of losing their guns in, in the divorce. It's it, huh. it kind of depends, it varies depending. Uh, let's say if the husband or the ex husband has a temper, it right. that can kind of make it a little difficult for the guy to. Because there's a red flag, red flag, I think it's called, where if right. you feel someone is in is a danger to society, then mm. um, the government can confiscate your gun for a certain amount of time, and mm. you have to deal with all this stuff. It's a really stupid thing because it gives everyone else the chance to take away your guns, even though if you're like, because it could be like you had a bad day at work. Right, and you just come home, and which I don't recommend using your wife as a, because sometimes when a guy gets home after work, he's like tunnel vision almost, and it's where your wife steps in, and then it's she asks you a question, and you don't like the question, even though it's a simple question, and then you just speak up a little bit louder, and because a lot, I think a lot of women don't understand is some women don't understand is. When a guy gets home, he just wants like 10 minutes of just peace and quiet. And then after that, ask him however many questions you want because he just wants to relax, be quiet. In my personal opinion, that's my experience is how I've dealt with it. Where if I come home, yeah. I just – my wife understands. Hey, look, I'll give him 10 minutes, maybe 20 minutes just to relax, calm down, just make him not think about work, life or anything, and then I'll come and ask him questions. When a guy raises me until his, I've had my shower beer. Yeah. When yeah. when a guy raises his voice, then that's when a woman ex-wife could be like, Well, he was being hostile with his voice and loud and stuff. I'm scared. It's that's where that comes in, Canadian Spider Man. It's yeah. it's a very sticky situation. Mm. Um and also it's one of the things and I, I'll wanna see what you guys think about this. And when you guys have kids, I know some of you guys have kids on this show. Um, what is what is a good age to train your kids? Guns, firearm safety, and gun safety, and all that stuff. For the, for question. the parents. Yeah. Tyron, we'll have. Well, you. I didn't. I didn't really get to do that with my kids, you know. And my my son's all grown up. Like I said, he just came to visit me uh, recently. He's 26 years old, you know. Um, but we did certainly we did spend a fair bit of time at the range and. Um, he was pretty excited to get his hands on some full autos for the last day. Um, there's a funny story to that as well. But we have, like I said, our age restriction at the range is eight. 
and we've had parents bring their kids in that are younger than that um mm. and they'll say oh no he's shot this before and they've got their little <clears throat> micro 22 rifles and uh that's just our policy is no no younger than eight on the range all right um yeah. but you know you, you have you have some 13 year olds come in and they're nervous uh i had a i had a customer bring his well mother and father bring their son in and he was 13 i think and we had private suites available but everyone was shooting shotguns and ars out there that day it was noisy like it was so noisy um and this kid's freaking out like it's he sounded like he was he said i thought i was in a war zone i was like yeah dude, like legit. <laughs> and, uh, yeah and so we took him uh we took him over to the pistol lanes because uh, he did want to shoot rifles that day but we, we took him over to the pistol ranges it was so much quieter and he had an absolute blast now his mm. dad said to me oh thank you so much man i thought we were going to lose him to to be an anti-gun on the first day and you know yeah. i was like oh no we can't have that so it's like everyone um adjusts differently obviously to it and uh i feel like like uh, some of the guys said earlier you know you want to make sure you're coming in with someone who you can trust we have Mm -hmm. um uncles bringing their nephews in we have a lot of daughters come and shoot with their dads i think that's just fantastic to see like that's really cool because mm. here's here's one for the boys <laughs> girls shoot better than boys most of the time and so they get yep. to have a win in what is typically a like a boyish thing to do a lot of the time and that's really good to see so it is about maturity and how they feel about um like their confidence level and things like that as well and and having that safety with them somebody they can trust to be able to 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 feel comfortable and confident mm. in what they're doing wow you nailed it on the on the head i actually have a funny story um if anyone else has funny stories we might go a little bit after the two hour mark which i'm totally fine with it i love this conversation the the chat is going nuts right now. This is it's the Second Amendment. It's important. Yeah. Well, this and is the third time we've here. done this. Great. This yeah. is this is the third time we've done this this topic, and they get better and better. And I was like, dude, we gotta do a Second Amendment because Trump said, when I get reelected, I'm gonna make every American citizen be able to do conceal carry without taking a test. And I was like, oh, sweet baby Jesus, please make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember the first time um, I went with, my, with, went with my father-in-law. I think it was, yeah, it was the first Christmas, not even the one year anniversary of my wife and I getting married. And, or maybe it was a set in the second one, somewhere on there. And we go to this range and it's all like gravel cement walls so everything echoes a lot more there's a dude yeah. in the next lane range with a smith and wesson 500. Mm -hmm. Ooh. and if you guys don't know what that one is um damn it's Ooh. a cannon <laughs> i want to shoot a 50 it. caliber no it's it's a mother load um this thing went off and everyone hit the deck. There was a guy who was, um, who was a Navy SEAL who was training us. He heard it. He's heard every type of weapon go off. He hit the deck so fast. <laughs> I was like, what's going on, guys? <laughs> and so the, the guy, he let his wife shoot it. And what Tyron was saying, women tend to be, and I think it has to do with patience and listening. With guys, it's a little bit – I totally agree with that. Women are a little bit better at shooting a firearm because I think it has to do with being patient and listening, and they can calculate a little them? bit more. Well, here's the other thing. It's in the military, yeah. snipers, women tend to be – Russia has figured this out. There's a female sniper back in, I think, World War One or World War Two. One of the best snipers was two. a female, and it, she was – two. And yeah. she in um they made a movie about it and like she was really good and I met a couple women yeah. who were snipers in the military and let me tell you uh they're good like really good yeah and Do you know who it's... holds the record now what Do you know who holds hmm. the record now what isn't it still Simo Heha yeah it's a Canadian isn't it no. yeah no I thought it was I, I yeah. thought it was uh, Simo Heha from Finland still. No, it's it's him still, but 
it's hmm. like one of the things that you commies dead. Like one of the things that you, <laughs> one of the things that um, you can take out of it is also don't be so uptight. Don't come to a range relaxed, chill. Mm. Because if you're uptight, like don't expect it. Because if you're expecting it and you're gonna get frustrated, you are. I've yeah. been frustrated on multiple ranges. Like, oh, I'm not getting this. I'm not doing this. Like, what am I doing wrong? Like, my brother-in-law taught me. He was a sniper and. He taught me actually how to do a scope. I hate scopes because I can't, I look through it in the wrong eye just because it's how it's, how I have to place it. And right. it's frustrating. And you, you want to throw the gun down. Don't throw the gun down. Just don't, that's just don't, <laughs> don't do it. I've seen it done. Just, just don't. Um, it's the thing is when you start being frustrated, take a few breaths just listen to people who, like my, my brother-in-law, he uses rifles a lot. I'm going to listen to him because he knows what he's talking about. He's He's been in the military. I'm going to listen. And mm. I did a Ruger 1, 100 yards. Was getting frustrated. This is the second time I was using a rifle. The second time, and I was getting frustrated. I was like, man, I can't look through the scope. Nailed it, 100 yards. That was a subsonic round. It was fun. Wow. I have that video up on Rumble. It was a fun round. I didn't even know I was going to get it because I ended up not looking when I shot it. <laughs> I no scoped it. I no looked it, and everyone cheered because I. It took probably about ten minutes for me to kind of figure it out. That's the other thing. Get, don't fire a firearm if you're not comfortable with it. Mm, like right. learn, learn it. It's that's the thing because once you, I'm not kidding. Once you actually start learning the firearm that you have it's it's a lot of fun and then when you're with a group of people like my birthday i'm gonna have a bunch of guys come out we're gonna cook meat have whiskey and scotch after and just shoot guns it's it's just gonna be a it's a male bonding thing and you're right tyron like when dads take their daughters that's a whole nother bonding moment that like that's oh, yeah. one thing if i have daughters i pray to god she likes firearms because if she does, <laughs> then I can take her and it's a bonding. It's a date. It's like a daddy yeah. daughter date thing. It's that yeah. thing. And then I know if I have sons, they're going to be like, can I come? I was like, no, 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 no. We'll go next <laughs> yeah. week. Don't worry. It's, it's those bonding moments that I think guys need to understand mm. that mm. if you hang out with a group of guys, like for me, there was a couple guys I didn't know ended up being really good friends. We text now. And yeah. just we talk, and it's not. It just happens. So happens. Hey, we're we're into guns, like mm -hmm. we're into this stuff, and it's just it opens up a whole new door. It's like you're gonna meet a guy who's a soy boy who ends up being one of your best friends, and you're like, hey, let's go to a range and just talk. And then you're gonna have conversations after. That's cool. After the range, when you sit down with a scotch, you're gonna have conversations. That it's just it's a bonding moment. That's what it is. To me, it's it's a time to bond with other guys. And then absolutely. Well said. Yeah. Like it, it really is. You see a lot of that coming, especially like uh younger groups of boys, like from college guys and, and stuff like that. They'll come in and make a day out of it. And it's it's so funny to watch them buy, oh, we'll just get like a, a box of a hundred rounds. You're like, guys, that's one mag each. You'll be back in two seconds. And they end up buying, you know, five hundred rounds minimum. Um, but yeah. they go in there and you know they're all quiet at first they all come out and they just they've had the night of their life and um, and uh, you know it's it's it is one of those real bonding things we get um, we get couples that come in and shoot all the time uh, and and they just have a blast it's their date night um, we see that every day of the week um, we've got quite a few regulars that come in um, and, and it's funny as well, you can tell uh, a little bit of personality by uh, what guns these people buy or come in and shoot on, on the day. Uh, and I've made some great friends just through the customers that I know that they're, they're just wonderful people, good value people, uh, there to have some fun and all relax. Um, it's, you know, it's one of the one of the best jobs I've had in, in forever, to be honest. It's, uh, You're it's a lucky man. Yeah, it's great. I know I'm gonna. I know I'm gonna take my wife to the range when I get the the Sig gun, and I'm gonna pull the 357 Magnum. I was like, you want to try this one? 
And my my stepdad, so, he's like, I want to shoot the three fifty seven. So when I meet them the next time, I think next month I'm gonna get it, get to be able to actually afford it because it, it costs money. Save up to it. That's the other thing. Budget it out. Just be responsible. It's yeah. It's a lot of fun, guys. If no one, here's the other thing. If no one's never shot or shot, and I'm nearby, I'll take you. I'll pay for you to go, and we'll just have fun. It's a, you're gonna learn so much, mm-hmm. and just be patient, and know you're gonna get frustrated, but just breathe and all that stuff. But we're gonna get into. I, I got a qu- I got a question to go around before we do. Yes. Ooh. What's everybody, what's everybody? Yeah, what's everybody's next? Purchase <laughs> gonna be? The what? I know everybody's you're getting what? a clock. Or, yeah, yeah, I mean, I know you're getting a sig. But what's everybody's next? What what, what are they eye fucking right now to buy? Oh, I have multiple guns. Hmm. I'll go last. Uh, Canadian Spider Man. Benelli pump action twelve gauge chrome. <sighs> nice. That's slick. Yeah. That's a nice one. <laughs> Why do we need? Yeah, that's that's what I'd like to get, and I have a question yeah. right after. All right. Yeah. Um, chrome, chrome right. and black. Chrome, chrome and black. Why not gold, man? Gold plated. Black. Yeah. Uh, Tyron. I have a bunch of guys at work that are really happy to see me uh, put together an AR. They've all got their own little bit of advice. You got to get this lower. You got to get this upper. You need this bolt carrier. I am going to be getting an AR in the ASAP. I feel like it's a pretty iconic firearm. And um, like, they're uh, fun. They certainly are. Um, I helped design one for the range when I was speaking to one of our, it was our compliance manager, but he, uh, he dabbles in a whole bunch of things. And I said to him, man, I want to build an ATF gun. And he's like, tell me more. And I said, it's the gun <laughs> <laughs> that has. <laughs> yes. I'm listening. Really? <laughs> it's it's the gun the ATF doesn't want us to have. And so. Oh, I know what um, you're talking about. Yeah, we got. Uh, That's why I uh, love this man. It's, <laughs> dude, it's pretty sexy. It's a 300 blackout on an AR platform. It's completely suppressed and it's full auto. I did want to put that folding stock on it, but he said, you know, because it's on the range, it would be a little less controllable with that folding stock. So we've kept that. So it's a short barreled rifle as well. So that's three tickets uh, or three. um, Yeah. Yeah. Three tickets that we've got on that one. And uh, it shoots pretty. It's one of those ones. It's got an EOTech holographic sight on top as well. And you line it up. It'll lift Shut up, up to the right. I'm good. But you can just uh, you can just tell that <laughs> thing where you want to be. You just punch straight through the middle every time, and it's quiet. It's it's super sexy. But mm. uh, so my next firearm will be an AR. However, having said that, uh, Canik <laughs> is releasing their TTI uh, their TTI combat. Um, and yeah. I am a Canik man. I highly rate Canik. I sell many Canics um, at work, and I feel like I might accidentally buy that before I get the AR. Hey, I'm not going to judge. That's okay. The money just fell That's... out of your wallet. Hey, what, what, do you yeah. what do you do? I you didn't know. know how this happened. It just... Yeah. The uh... thing is, I have a wife who, who does enjoy shooting as much as I do, and uh, I think the next one oh, should go. be whatever she chooses. Many... I think that's probably going to have to be the rule. Like you take, well, here's what you could do. You can just give hints. Just be like, hold this one. That's what I'm going to do. If I hint wife, every day. <laughs> if, if my wife's like, yeah. hey, I want to get this gun, I'm like, here, get this one. And then all of a sudden, I have a Viper. I don't know how it happened. I have a Viper. Don't know how it happened. <laughs> yeah. God, that gun. I want that one, but I'm not spending $6,000. No. Uh, no. Anyone else? Yeah. Um, I got a guilty pleasure. First of all, I want to say a couple of years ago, uh, you know, because funny, we were talking about, you know, daddies and daughters, you know, going out to the range and stuff like that in Calgary, right beside where my wife loves to go, which is like fabric land, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> right beside there is, is the, uh, the Calgary shooting range. Right. And one day my uh, my wife asked my daughter, oh, you know, because I hate going into fabric land. I hate it with a passion. Oh, my God. Anyway, she asked my daughter if she wanted to go in with her to fabric land, right? It's like, 
nah, I don't really feel like it, right? So, so you know, wife went in, and then I asked her, hey, you want to go into the gun place? She's like, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yes. and we and we spent a half an hour in there looking at every conceivable rifle, handgun, everything. Right? Oh my god! And she loved it. It was like a treat for her. Right? She god, she's so even cool. like, oh yeah, she's even pointed like, oh my god, they even got pink guns. Are you kidding me? Like, we're, yeah, they got pink guns too. So, you know, hey, and, I've shot a pink gun. It's yeah, awesome. there you go. And yeah, and you know, I I'd love her to just you know take the test and stuff like that, and uh, you know get her get her gun license and uh, and you know just shoot some off. And yes. that being said, that being said, uh, you know, and she's like fourteen now, so you know, I I like to get do a it tank. at some point. I know. Well, you're close. So if my guilty pleasure, okay, is an M134 minigun. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. How are you doing, Daddy? Yeah, exactly. That's a daddy gun. I know. That's a <laughs> you just clean right. that when your daughter goes to prom. Let me meet your date yep. first. <laughs> I've always been impressed with a Gatling gun for some odd reason. If That's I had fun. to mow down a jungle, that would be it. You know, ever since Predator, it's like I was just yeah, about to say Predator. Predator. Yeah, yeah. Predator. ever since I see it, it's like, oh yeah, I want that. That's what I want, <laughs> you know. Uh, Tom, we'll say this: What's your guilty pleasure? Yeah, well, I like the Gatling gun idea. That that would be a dream. And as soon as you said oh, it, yeah. I also thought of the just <laughs> mow down everything in front of you. Um, now, like Nobody I said, my... plasma rifle in the forty watt range. Yeah, a BFG. <laughs> <laughs> now, like, like I said, my knowledge is a lot less than you guys here, but I mean. I always wanted to learn to snipe. I just, it's a fascinating, my buddy of mine, he can, he's really good at it. And, and uh, no, I don't know any of the certain models per se that I wanted, but I, I, one thing about this country is we can't have handguns now and the boys thing. And it's ridiculous. And to me, it's I know everybody talks about it. I've ever heard. Uh, yeah. The, yeah. I know the desert Eagle. I know it's overdone and that, but it's a beautiful gun. It's just visually, it's a beautiful gun. And I've gotten to touch one and it's just like, it spoke to me. And I was like, I want to shoot the damn thing. I want to like, uh, oh my God, it's beautiful, but it's just, you can't now in this country. Yay. Yeah. Well, that's just, I that, might that's shoot just one down the road. Here. That or one of Walter P 38. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My, so I, I have, before a, you go, since you're going last, let me go. Since it was my question. Okay, okay. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. I've got. I'm not just saying. You know, I, I got two, and this one I'm kind of like a bazooka. Is it, is it, no. <laughs> well, you know where I could get one. Um. <laughs> so this is a coin flip, and really, it's just going to be whichever one the money falls towards first. For the help for the home defense, I really yeah. want a Caltech KSG 12 gauge. Downward Ooh. ejection, bull pop. Oh, you know. Ooh. It's really You're speaking my language, baby. See, right? Yeah, and yeah. that it's just a sexy, sexy gun. Yeah, the other it's... one, and I've made no bones of my love for Ruger 1022s on the show. Mm -hmm. They've got one. Ruger's got a. Uh, it's a. Um, they're uh, nine millimeter Ruger's PC car carbine nine, and that's it, 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 it. Just for fun, just for planking, and you know because you can pick up nine millimeter ammo anywhere after you. Uh, you know, because the purpose of a pistol is to get a rifle, but if you already have the carbine, then you don't need the pistol. You can take the mags. Because mm -hmm. you can put Glock, um, Sig, and Ruger mags. It'll accept all three of them. Wow. That's the thing I like about that gun is you can, yeah. For me, it's, I'm of course, I'm going to get the Sig P320. It's. Rods of heaven. I've Thank shot you. it. It's a big gun on me. It's it's not a, it's not a small gun by any stretch of the imagination, mm -hmm. but it's a it's a nice one. I have a buddy that owns one. He let me shoot it. It's really nice. Recoil's not too bad at all. Um, I would love a dirty hairy gun. Yeah, just something about a revolver. It's just well. Also, I wouldn't mind owning the um, well, the, of course, the Viper gun. Who wouldn't turn that one down? I'm, I would take that one, but the judge. or, mm. or, um, my brother-in-law has a shotgun magazine fed and it's really nice. Um, but it's, I would love just for show and tell never to shoot it maybe once, 
right. is the Smith & Wesson 500. As mm. ridiculous as that gun is, it's a very sexy gun. It's a show and tell. Like if you pull, if you just open up the case and show that, every guy's like, "Oh," <laughs> <laughs> and then you just say, "Yeah, it's a home defense." I saw speaking, one guy that ha- <laughs> what? So speaking of show and tell, were we going to do uh, some show and tell tonight or no? We we can do it after the show. We Let's can't do, do it live just because YouTube. Yeah, they have that yeah. rule, but um, yeah. we can do it after. But um, would love it. They would, but there is a rule that they can't just for like if it goes off. That's the only thing. And, yeah, for sure. Um, but your views go yeah, way up. I, I've seen <laughs> yeah. one guy with a Smith and Wesson 500 with a scope on it. Ooh. I'm like, I've seen that actually. What are you trying to go for? Yeah. But on that note, on that note, we'll do one. We'll do. Wait. Oh no, Canadian Spiderman had a question. Yeah, I did have a question. I did have a question, uh, Steve, because the whole the whole topic Cannon. is is Second the, Amendment the rights. Mm. Second Amendment rights. Yeah. Um, yeah. Why why do Americans need guns? Oh my goodness, I'm too loud. I'm sorry. Uh, why do American citizens need guns if the police have them? The police have guns. Why do you need your guns, Steve? Mm. Because a cop should have you to carry. Well, it's. Yeah. it's it's you heard brought, sometimes cops do stupid things. Yeah. Doesn't mean like, hmm, that's a good question. I it's, would rather have a responsible citizen than a corrupt cop. That's a better if answer. If I'm in da- if I'm in danger. Well, well here's, honest, who do they work for? Hmm. So let me, let me just say this: the cops in Fort Worth have a brilliant reputation, and I've I've met and engaged with a bunch of them. We have a lot of law enforcement come through our range, right. as well, um, and they're they're great value guys, and they're in for yeah. all the right reasons, from what I can tell. Uh, I think it's unfortunate when we see police officers disrespected so much that they mm-hmm. get defunded. What the, what yeah. is that bullshit all about? If yeah. you want crime, that's that's one sure way of doing it in places where that same liberal mindset says you can't own mm-hmm. firearms here. So good luck with that. See how you yeah. get along. Uh, that and no, I'm, and I'm not implying that every cop is corrupt or anything. Oh, no, right? no, no. I'm an amazing no. police officer. I got friends. Oh, no, 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 exactly. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's, um, oh. it's, it's one of those things, I think, that um, uh, there, there sometimes isn't, well, there, there quite often isn't a police officer that's able to get on the scene uh, as quickly as a citizen who's there. Like if, yeah. you know, um, I carry yeah. all day, every day now. And I, you do. I would hate what to. What do your parents think? Visit. What <laughs> but, does your uh, mom think? My mm. mom always probably had a feeling that I'd carry guns. I was a firearm enthusiast from from when I was a kid. Um ah. You know, your Australian friends must think you're pretty fucking cool. They they also they also think I should have been born here. So <laughs> <laughs> when I told when I told my mom, I was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna get some guns," and she, instantly she's like, "Can I fire them?" And I was like, I was like <laughs> yeah. "Well, I have Perk. one gun." And then she's like, "What well, you got?" I was like, "Well, 357." She's like, "Can I shoot?" I was like, "No, <laughs> <laughs> you can you could try, but you break her wrist when." Perk. Herc 130. Oh, it just Thomas. sounds like he's he's fired a lot. He sounds like it. Sounds here's like the thing. This is what I've understand is yeah. if I ever this would be fun. If there was yeah. ever a Manorama weekend event, mm. do it outside if, California. When? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But just do when a gun range weekend. No, not if when. You, I don't know when. I have to. I'd have to have enough people to be involved with this. Be like, hey, we'll put. I'm we'll saying do not this. if when. Never I know. <laughs> we'll, hey, patience, baby, patience. But Herc one thirty. I'm loving M one three four. Oh my gosh. Yeah. The amount, of, like, it would just be fun to just have guys come mm. hang out with people who've been on this show and just yes. firearms all weekend. Yeah. It's just. Yep. Have fun, cook meat, just a man's day. Because I guarantee you, anyone who I can guarantee this, anyone who has issues with me or thinks I'm a dick and all this stuff, which they're 50 50, 
come <laughs> hang out with me for a weekend. They're gonna be like, dude, this guy's awesome. We're shooting guns. We're having fun. Like it's it's a blast. He's a dick, but he's fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But so he's fine. Answer comments. your question. Yeah. When seconds count, cops are a minute away. Yeah. yeah. That's true. Right. Yeah. Yeah. There is a famous yeah. person who said, "I carry a gun because I can't carry a policeman in my in my pocket," and and I think that's what you were referring to. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Yeah. 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 I've got a quote from Thomas Jefferson, um, mm. uh, Steve, because it is about yes. the Second Amendment, and so I did a little research. I know I'm not American, but it's okay. I take doing your show very responsibly, so I did some research. Thomas Jefferson is quoted as saying. The strongest reason for the people to retain the right to keep and bear arms is as a last resort to protect themselves against tyranny in government. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. why cops are not only should not only have guns, but citizens should as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And on that Someone note, fancies. I've watched enough lackluster videos to know that. Uh, yeah, I mean, not all cops, but still. Yeah, great. I know. I know a lot of cops who are responsible, great oh, yeah. guys, and great women. And I've met some that I'm like, maybe you shouldn't be a cop. Just a hunch. <laughs> I noticed generally sheriffs are cooler than cops. Oh, they are a blast! Yeah, yeah. I I went to a <laughs> range with a sheriff. Mountains are so much fun. <clears throat> I went to a range with a sheriff on an open. At, they call it a BLM. It's not Black Lives Matter, but it's a BLM. I. Uh, what they call it. Yeah. And he pulls out a full, like this big military gun. He's like, You want to shoot this? I was like, What? He's like, oh, nah, It's your second amendment. <laughs> <laughs> but on that note, we're going to get to one of the coolest segments of this show. And that yeah. is Tip of the Hat. I like the whip at the end of it. So tonight, every night, um, if you haven't noticed, there is a poll up. Who's the most basic? Jordan Peterson or Joe Rogan? I made it difficult this time. I really made it difficult. We'll, we'll see what the vote is in a few days. But, um, the tip of the hat is pretty much society doesn't like male or masculinity. As you can see, point to Dylan Mulvaney or any other movie that tries to be masculine. An email. I pull a name out. If you don't know the person's name, that's okay. Okay. I come in there. I don't know. And we just give out real quick what our thoughts are and a positive masculinity. Up next is Peter Selba. I've Ooh. lost audio. Oh, you did. Yeah, my internet kind of blinked out for a second. Who was it? You, yeah, I think he, your mic was popping in a little bit. So yeah, yeah. Oh, no, that would be on Rumble. Side. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, that would be on Rumble. Sometimes Rumble does that. Uh, the name is Adris Elba. Hmm. Oh, Edris Elba. Edris. Okay. Sorry, I don't know yeah. British names. Yeah, I know. That's okay. I'm curious. Yeah, Edris Elba. Oh my God. Um. Is there, is there anything that this dude can't do, right? Jeez, I mean, I mean, I think he made his rise uh, as as a DJ in England, as far as I know, as far as I remember, and and a damn good one on top of that too, right? Like, I mean, raveling like Fat Boy Slim and stuff like that, as far as I remember. And, you know, I mean, just so popular that he ended up, uh, you know, getting in movies that way. I mean, you know, I didn't think I kind of like him playing, uh, you know, in the Thor movies as Heimdall. But, you know, I don't know, kind of works on you, I suppose. But, um, you know, he's he's proven himself to be quite the capable actor. And you know what? Like, I, I know this is going to sound probably kind of weird i wouldn't mind seeing him as james bond either and i know that kind of went out yeah. like a few years ago you know edris elba as like you know james bond and that's actually something i could get behind you know 
He did he say just he seems didn't like want to. Extre- yeah, that's true because you know we kind of felt that you know like James Bond should be, you know, James Bond, right? You know, white British agent dude, you know, and I kind of respect him for that, you know, instead yeah. of like you know going in for the whole race swapping kind of thing. But uh, yeah, it's like it's like this dude can like play anything, do anything. It seems like um, I don't know. I I just like him as an extremely capable capable actor and nice guy. All right. Uh, Knows how to have some fun. Yeah. Yeah, to that point, too. Yeah, I mean, he's done a lot. He was a kickboxer and, you know, all the other things you mentioned, too. He had a really good acting trajectory until two fatal flaws. And you don't hear much from him anymore now. One, Hmm. cats. (laughs) Oh, yeah, he did. Because they never did the butthole cut. He was in cats. Yeah. And two. Wow. The abomination that should have been brilliant because they spent so much time working on it, but it ended up being worse than a Lucasfilm Star Wars movie. That's the Dark Tower. Why do you have to remind me of that? I forgot. I didn't that. mind that. It was terrible. It, it, could it, have it was, it was actually worse than the movie Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. So, and that's yeah, saying something. That's true. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no. Yeah. That's. But he was a kickboxer, so you know. There you go. Hey, uh, Tyron. I do not know this bloke, and I'm going to have to pass. Hey, that's okay. Uh, Canadian Spider-Man. I know someone said in the chat on YouTube, you broke Canadian Spider-Man last time we did this. Not tip of the hat. That was Ombre or Senorita. <laughs> we literally, yeah. I don't know if you've yes. seen that one, Tyrone. I got. Oh, my goodness. One. I saw it uh, last night, and uh, I'm glad <laughs> he, I wasn't I got for that one. I would have been in all sorts of trouble. <laughs> Canadian Spider Man, I think we broke him. Yeah, we're good looking. He, you were emotional. <laughs> like, talk about emotional damage. Like, you. I, I had to put on hockey equipment. Yeah, I told Gary the next. I told Gary the next. Hey, he died laughing. He thought it was funny. Oh, man. No idea. <laughs> His brain shut down. <laughs> and a little suspect, I think. Like, that's not yeah. fair. Like, shaving the apple? <laughs> Fuck you. Fuck you. Okay. Yeah, they're shaving the apple now. <laughs> I'm kidding, uh, Canadian man. Spider Man, what do you think of I like, I feel like hanging outside of those clinics and just everyone walks out with a shaved Adam's <laughs> apple, just belting him in the side of the head for oh, three seconds. Oh my god. <laughs> and we're no longer on YouTube. <laughs> that's what we're doing now. Exactly. Oh man. Uh, um yeah, no, he <laughs> just uh, elders, yeah, uh, man, I would actually be very, I would approve of, of, of him playing James Bond much in the yeah. way that I would love to see Tom Holland play Blade one day. Absolutely. Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, that's sarcasm, by the way, if you see where I'm going with that. But yeah, no, uh, I like him. I really do. He's... Um, I've I've seen him play a smart, you know. I've seen him play a few roles, uh, and uh, especially in Guardians of the Galaxy, he's got he's got some smart ass lines, and I really think that that is something that that men need to retain is not be afraid. Mm. We're not we're done walking on fucking eggshells, man. We're done. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Sorry, Gloria. Fuck you. We're done. <laughs> Uh, and and he, he he is not scared to throw some humor in there and uh, be smartass, and he does it well. And he, yeah. um, I think that that is something all men can 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 learn from and look up to. And without being without being stupid or malicious, you know. Um, yeah. He, I, I really liked uh, the 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 roles he played in in Guardians of the Galaxy and uh, and in uh, in Ragnarok in particular. And he's got um, he he is a man and he, and he he portrays quite the masculine man, but he's also got a sense of humor, but with the smart ass tone. And, you know, um, John Cleese also comes to mind. He's got that smart ass kind of mm. whip crack to it, yep. and it's got a sting and a bite to it. And, it, and it's got a truth to it, and that's where the sting comes from. Mm-hmm. And that's that's what I like about, about him. Yeah. Uh, Tom, we'll do one more. We'll do one more, and then we'll get to Tom. 
or you know, first Tom, it, then one more. I'm not going to be saying. I mean, he plays that macho, amazing character. If anybody's seen Hobbs and Shaw, he's amazing in that. It's a really good role in that one. Uh, Heimdall, that's mm. that's his well known role. He's done voiceovers for games. He did recently Cyberpunk and the Phantom Liberty release recently. He has has a very good voice too, right? Because he does a lot of games, a lot of cartoons and stuff as a you know voiceovers, and he's really good that too. He has that classical voice. He can do classical acting, but yet he can do action. So the guy is very versatile and. Uh, and I, I like you said, I, I think the cast thing messed him up because you haven't seen him as much. He did the video game stuff, but he's kind of gone down, which sucks because I think he could be a really good action star and then really get out there. But again, certain things in Hollywood, the way it goes, you do certain one thing, you, you can be gone the next percent. But he just seems like a nice guy, too. And like I said, he could do so many different types of roles. So, yeah. Man. <clears throat> you guys hit it on the nail. I can't. I got no answers. Usually I do. <laughs> now, Stallone, come out. All right, Jet Lee. Oh, jeez. Wow. Ooh. There you go. Yes. Um, we'll go with Mike. Ha, Jet Lee. Um, I wanted this for Andy. Yeah, I know this. Yeah, I know. I'm slipping back in. Fantastic martial artist. I think he's. I think he's kind of underrated as an actor. You know, it's like he's he's like so close to kind of almost being the next dare I say it, almost kind of like the next Bruce Lee. Yeah, hundred percent agree. Close. Close. Very, very. You know, yeah, yeah. I think he's that versatile, right? Mm. And I think extremely underrated on top of that. So yeah. um yeah, that's that's pretty much what I got to say about him. I haven't watched a lot of his movies, but you know the few that I have watched, it's like, oh man, dude is kick ass. Yeah, uh, Ordy. He's just not around much anymore. I don't know if he's laying low or if he's done, but I, you know, it's yeah. that whole there can there can there can be only one as long as Jackie Chan's still making movies. Jet Li doesn't have a shot. I don't think Jackie mm. Chan is real. I think he's a machine. <laughs> <laughs> Shut your whore right, mouth. Sounds like me. He's Henry. been in a Bruce Lee film, so yeah. Blast oh. for me. But yeah, yeah Ordy. So, I, mean, I I got. I mean, I I don't know much about the guy. All right, that's fine. I, I know I know enough to more than say my usual. Yeah, never heard of her. But uh, <laughs> not much. Hey, more. that's cool. Uh, Tyron, do you know who Jet Li is? Yeah, I think I enjoyed his movies growing up. He was pretty good, and uh, he had a screen presence. Um, uh, yeah, I remember. <coughs> uh, was it the one that he yeah. did? Where he had to yeah. defeat himself yes. in every parallel. Super cheesy to... movie, but awesome. Oh, yeah. Awesome. yeah, man, I enjoyed yeah. that one, and uh, I think I watched that more than one. Yeah, yeah, apart from that, I don't know what else he's uh, he's done with himself. Oh, Is it yeah. right? I wouldn't fight him if that's what you're asking. I wouldn't fight him. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Canadian Spider Man, the guy with the stick. Um, Have you seen this? Stick? We got a level two stick sighting. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, Jackie Chan's the man, but um, I love Jet Li. Um, yeah, he's uh, he's got a real <coughs> intensity to him and. And I'm so happy that he was included in the Expendables and the Expendables Two, mm, yep. and and the, the, you know, the reason the most that I think as a man you can take from Jet Li is, do you remember in the Expendables when he had that fight with Dolph Lundgren? Yeah, and mm -hmm. literally Dolph yeah. Lundgren is about 18 inches taller than he <laughs> is, like yeah. literally. 40% bigger and heavier than Jet Li, yeah. at least like double his weight, probably double his weight, 40% mm -hmm. tall. Incredible. And 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 as a shorter man myself, as a spidey sized guy, um, I I think that is something that you can take from it. I honestly like Jet Li didn't give up. And once he had him under the stairs where Dolph was like, you know, having to crouch, and Jet Li was like, you know. If you remember under the iron stair, Jet Li actually like was pummeling him pretty good. So never give up. Yeah. Uh Jet Li is is the epitome. That is 
Uh, that's the password to many of my accounts uh, is never give up. Uh, it's so important to, to remember that. And uh, hopefully um, Jet Li uh, comes back and, and does uh, some roles. But um, as a smaller guy with a smaller statue, something men can learn. I th that might be the most important lesson as a man you can learn is never give up. Mm. Never surrender. Yeah. Uh, Tom. Oh, that was profound. Um, I've just been a long time fan. I mean, yeah, just the classical Asian films to the modern, like Romeo Must Die. That was awesome. Um, one of my favorites here, and I forget about it, yeah, War. It was him and Statham. Amazing film. Yeah. Brilliant film. Such a good film. But then he goes oh, in yeah. his hero, which is more of a classical Asian film. Um, and, and one thing about that is being an artist and stuff, they used color to actually help tell the story in that film, Hero. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Brilliant. Uh, he last I heard, he decided to take a long break. He just got he did everything, you know, he made enough money, he just wanted to enjoy life, and that's why you don't see him as much. He's like, I've done it all, you know, and he's, he's getting older, and that's hard on your body because he didn't quite do what Jackie did, but he was still pretty uh, physical there. And he, mm -hmm. his body's like, Okay, I'm getting a little hurt, let's just take some time and relax. He made more than enough money, he had lost films, he might come back eventually and do more stuff. But the expendables yeah. that's some of the last stuff he really did. I think he did Milan. Yeah. But yeah, no, uh, very amazing, amazing. And I still think Bruce is the number one, but I think, and everybody says Jackie. Jackie was amazing, and J still is. But I think Jet yeah. Li as an overall pure martial artist rivaled Bruce almost, if not. Um, yeah. I mean, we think so, yeah. Did I go, did I get everyone? I think I did. Orty? And Steve. As, oh, yeah, you got someone that, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone that oh, I got lived Orty. In, us, in Asia, I'm telling you, that, that we, we don't realize how popular... Like these stars, like Jackie Chan, Jet Li, yeah, they're kind of popular over here. Well, they're massive. You have no idea how oh, popular yeah. they are in Asia, and they have 10, 100 times our population. Yeah. They're not like Jet, yeah. They Like, if you want to go by population, they are the most famous stars in all the world. Arnold Schwarzenegger is on, on like third on the list <laughs> by population. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's, he's an idiot. I say Stallone over <laughs> any day. But I'm saying, don't you don't understand that? Like, well, yeah, I know, no, yeah. We don't under, we're in a I met we don't the, understand how big Asia is and the market. Yeah. Well, I met the stunt guy for Jet Li, and he's like, dude, mm -hmm. like, it's it's massive. It's mm -hmm. well, there's only one true martial artist, Chuck Norris, yeah. baby. Chuck Norris, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's he did it so in the, jeans. the reason I, why, yeah. Bru the reason why Jet Li is not doing much movies is because his wife said, "Look, you've done enough. It's it's she she told him to stop doing all this stuff because your health, your body." And he's like, "You know what? You're right. Sometimes a man should listen. Sometimes the wife is wise on a lot of things." And I think it was he did. Someone mentioned the 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 movie that he did, The Warrior, or. No, he did the a one? movie that was um, his last big Asian film that he did. It was a film. Oh. It. No, no, IP was, Man. No, he wasn't in that one. Shoot, there was one that was in. That I love it. Hero. That's what it was. Yeah, that's what I was mentioning. Yeah. But they used color to create it. it. Was a beautiful film. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Hero was his last big epic movie, and then he got dragged into doing all this other stuff. That was supposed to be his last movie ever. Yeah, because his wife said, "Hey, look, you've. How about you mm. relax and take it easy? Your body's gonna take a lot of hits." But the it's thing about Bruce Lee, yeah, Bruce. Oh yeah, I loved yeah, him. Man. I loved his character in Expendables. But the thing about Jet Li is he's humble. Like, mm. yeah, you get the Bruce Lees, you get the Jackie Chans. They're all big stars, but Bruce, like Jet Li, he's kind of just under the radar. He's very much humble about where he's at and anything he, he does. And you see that. And it's you see that with his kids. And he's just very much like, it's not about me. It's never been about me. I just do this because, hey, look, someone needed to do martial arts in a movie. Okay, I'll do it. It's He may not be the greatest, but it's it's an art for him. He does it with art. I love when I see him in movies because it's very methodical and just very – it's artistic. And I – that you don't get that with a lot of martial art people. It's like how much can I hit you? 
with Jet Li, it's just very much like it's a dance, choreographic dance for me. Yeah. And I love that. It's very artistic. That's the one thing I love about the Asian culture. It's very much like tradition. It's very much humble. It's yeah. Like my, my folks went to Japan to visit um, my stepbrother and they were like, dude, you got to come here, especially to the villages. It's fantastic. Sure. It's the culture there. It's they teach guy. That's the one thing that I would love guys to be taught in America or any country how to be humble, how to be respectful. Mm. It's just, that's the thing. It's here in the States. It's like, bang, bang. Hey, hey, hey. And I'm like, you guys are crazy. Well, but we got to look. Yes. Just quickly. I was going to, we've discussed like, yeah. that. I want to get into film. Asian cinema is one of the reasons I love film. I love Asian cinema. It's just, oh, I love of, it. I'm on my favorites. Yeah. And I, I really so this may be the longest episode. I'm not sure, but I want to thank everyone who's That's been on this said. one. Uh-huh. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> How you doing? How you doing? As long as you know the measurement. But um, Ooh, la, la. <laughs> <laughs> But I want to thank everyone who's been on here. Um, Ordi, I know you've been gone for a while. Glad you're back. Um, Plus, I'm, I'm doing this in pain. I just there you go. Right. There you go. You didn't have now, to come. I sent you awesome. the link. Just no, I know, case. but you know what? This is my favorite topic. I've been on all three. I wasn't going to miss it. I know, right? And Canadian Spider Man with your bonfires. I'm always expecting yeah, like, you a show that heart to come out. Yeah. Um, Tom, Mike, um, Tyron, I know we had a little technical difficulties having you on, but man, it's it's been a blast. It's yeah. Yeah. I learned a lot from you. I learned a lot from everyone. Um next week we're gonna talk about um how Eddie. cars and men are related. <laughs> mm. oh. Yeah, I'm bringing that topic back. Interesting. Yeah. Since we all give them girls' names. I know, right? I just, yep. I, I see. I named my car one time Goose because it was white. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> I was like, this looks like a goose. Um, but yeah, we'll do that topic next week. We'll do a car episode next week um, at 7 p.m. Pacific time. 10 p.m. Eastern time. I want to thank everyone. I'm not going to do a Lego build this weekend because I'm be working on a house this weekend. So can't. Yeah, uh, job comes before Legos. That's for sure. But um, yeah. you can check me out <coughs> at Not Rank or Steve on Twitter or X. I will give out the tally of the vote right now. So far, um, it is tied 50 50 between Jordan Peterson and Joe Rogan. Who's it's a good the most one. Based. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, I made it difficult, you know, like Hombre or Senorita. There's someone on this panel that just we broke him. <laughs> made Spider-Man. Do you know who that nah. person is? Yeah. At this point, I'm not fucking any of them. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you guys, this has been a fun episode. I love this very much. I will see you guys next week. Scary. On that note, we always have one guy do the send-off. And that guy is fantastic. Mm -hmm. And we say bye-bye. Ciao.